Well, I hit recording. Yep, and we've done the sound test. Oh my god, everyone's here without a ping. I just realised. Yeah, I didn't do yeah. the ping or anything today. Maybe the like ping the first is, time ever. Is, is young Nicholas here? Young Nicholas yeah, is no. not only here, but he turned up, I think, on time. Good lord, he just uh, hasn't said anything. I, I didn't ping him in WhatsApp either. I was two minutes late. Well, uh, you ruined it. Your honesty is appreciated. But you ruined it. Uh, if I'm honest, he's consistently more like between five and fifteen minutes late, so two minutes is still pretty good for him. No, no sass intended. No, that's that's completely fair. You know, I so I just I, I think I, I mentioned in Facebook, but for Carl's reference, I just edited the like finished editing the very last Carbon episode at long last, and I forgot about Young Nicholas's chosen boon from bloody um, Ulfric Stormcloak. That he has a picture of a full length portrait of Catclop put up in the castle in Wilhelm. Oh, God. <laughs> with his name underneath embossed as Catclop. I forgot about that, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it titled Catclop? It is, is titled it? Catclop because at the very last, he finally got another Khajiit who could speak Tagra up. And the other Khajiit was like, yeah, this guy, Catclop, wants you to put up a portrait of him. And Alfred got really embarrassed that he'd been calling him. Uh, sorry, no, it's titled Dowimbar. And Alfred yeah, got really yeah. embarrassed that he'd been calling him Catclop the entire time and no one had told him. And had this whole little. Because like, the only, other, the only other people around had called him Catclop. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> oh, Finally, <dear>. raging fucking <laughs> giant cat. Ready to kill anyone. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens when like you choose a character that literally can't communicate with anyone else. You weren't ready to kill anyone. No, no, it's what happens when you trust your fellow players. The only I people you ever killed were people who referred to you as Dowimbar. So, I would only... point out, I spent I about five sessions reason. referring you to you as Dowimbar, and you still got annoyed at me. No, no I didn't. Yes, no, 100% no. happened. No, we've got the recordings. Uh, the first oh, I have, oh, and it's not shit. because you call me Doe and Bye, it's because of something else. But <laughs> you I mentioned it like that. I yes. think you got confused about it being something else because nothing else happened. So, oh, anywho. Uh, I was actually watching the first episode today. I'm actually intending to go through them. They actually made excellent background, sort of just like whilst I was working away on this. I'm glad. It was excellent. And just listening to Nick getting more and more angry about Doe and Bar and Cat Club up. Glorious. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how me and Nick are still friends. Do win the, clock? the relief in in young Nicholas you. oh, and Creed's God. voices when it got to the end of the campaign and they were allowed to use thumbs again. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anyway, let's, let's have some reminders from last session. Holborn is bleeding from his hand. The party oh, yeah. is lost in the underworld and cannot get out. Blood screams. Popajack is starting to connect emotions and spiritual lights. That's the, like, flashes of light he was seeing when other people had strong emotions. Then he started, like, yeah. practicing his emotion channeling himself. Uh, select party members are holding on to rope. I believe that's because you were worried about going over the edge of the giant abyss. <clears throat> the bastards had rope. That's Benji learning that you had rope after he was forced to improvise. Vampire sarcophagus in the floor has mobile eyes and is looking at the party. <sighs> the werewolf outside is frightful, and the afterlife is not delightful. Possibly underneath the bowl of the mountain. And that's it. So I believe we ended with three of you clustered around the like sarcophagus recessed into the floor of this uh, colossal hung platform. That's, I believe, Holman Twight, Sebastian Thornbury, Timothy Popajack, and oh, four of you then, and Woodrow Tango. Uh, and then Reginald Foxy Smide was stood off to the side, sulking. <coughs> sulking quite legitimately as you Sorry. all like, tacitly left him to die. Uh, what are we doing, folks? I think I just Wait. let Blood drop onto the sarcophagus, I think. I think oh, it was God. curling in your hand. Yeah, oh, no, your you'd, move. You'd like pulled your hand away in a no. Did he get the... like degloved? No, uh, he didn't. He, um, he touched his. Or, no, he touched the you, your gun, in fact, because you'd been using it as a club, so it was probably a bit useless. Um, yeah, he touched it to the. Uh, Wait, wasn't his gun used the torch? 
That's true. Must be yeah, yeah, he, he attached the bayonet and he poked oh, it in yeah, the eye or something and yeah. it got really cold. Yeah, the gun got really, really cold. cold. And I yanked my hand away yeah. before I got the right the damage. Exactly, so you've like dropped the gun, but it got like it's, like freezer burn cold and froze to his hand, and then in the course of oh, that, that's right, away, yeah. it rips. But he did, to be fair, I think pull his hand away and has an amount of fabric he can soak it into. Oh my fucking god, this is hot. So, what are we doing? I'll just be staring at Alban's hand. Yeah, I would like to move closer to uh, Django. You're doing an amazing impression of Michael Gambon Dumbledore there. I just want to point that out. I suppose he ate really spicy chicken wings for his performance. <laughs> okay. Uh, wrong thing. I'm going to, yeah, withdraw my hand. I don't want to get any blood on the creepy sarcophagus. Uh, and I guess I'll yelp in pain. Um, and I turn to the rest of the party. Well, lads. I suggest we don't touch the sarcophagus. It doesn't seem to matter if there's something in the way. That shit got cold. Indeed. Hmm. Must say I'm at a loss at what exactly we can do. There well, is a dull... Ooh, sorry. Well, it seems to me that uh, we are to go up... We, f- we seem to have found the source of where the blood ends up. Gesture. <coughs> that was a stalactite, which is... Uh, Dripping blood is it onto it slowly? Yes, there's a sort of colossal spindly black stalactite just immediately above the mouth. And there's a oh. slow swirling drip of blood down the stalactite and into the open jaws of the sarcophagus. Yeah. Now well, I suggest we have well, it seems to me like we have we have found the source of what may be causing the villagers to go absolutely insane. I wonder Perhaps maybe we can destroy the stalactite, and that would stop whatever's powering, uh, whatever's in the sarcophagus, which appears to be powering the effect. Is this metagame? Or turn a like drip into a free fall. Uh, okay. Hey. I'm think- oh, sorry. Uh, destroying the stalactite could also turn the drip into a more steady flow if there's a <laughs> reservoir up there. True. Indeed. Uh, I wonder well, if. Also, uh, I, I don't know- think it's metagamey to say vampire, is it? At this point, I think to be fair, you've got the vampire hunter there with you, so you can make this. Who is really not happy about this whole thing? Um, yes, you've not been happy for some time, though. I, I, I point. I, I suggest. It looks like you know this. Uh, this vampire. We figured it out it's on the other side of the veil once again. So we're somewhere in a chamber. Somewhere in a chamber in real life is that vampire. I wonder. Well, it it would be safe to assume <laughs> that it's probably below the structure that we. Uh, entered into. I can uh, tell you now, digging wasn't working. Yes. Either we find a way to transfer back over to the real life and potentially stop whatever's in there. Yeah. But I don't really want well, to. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it begs the question of if it is the, the vampire itself uh, controlling the people, even though it seems to be half awake, or if it's a uh, an actual artifact that is drawing the people nearby that was placed into his tomb for the explicit purpose. Um, Either I'm... way, we should most definitely try to get into this... Uh... No, I have an out-of-character oh, opinion. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah, again, purely out-of-character. But I figure that the Roman people are trying to resurrect it so that they can kill it properly, because it's clearly not dead after whatever happened to it the first time. Ooh, like, they I want like revenge. The I like the theory... But I, so my my theory is it's a vampire, it's a Roman vampire that's coming up from Torpor, and it's sort of like mm. half awake, half asleep, and it's sort well, of accidentally psychic. We were reminded last session its name is Duanesh, which is so it is like, not Roman. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Welsh, isn't it? There is a so, dull but, grinding noise. Uh, <laughs> oh. So it could be some sort of uh, <coughs> Romans against this, like you said. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. And Sorry, the jaw me. on the vampire's sarcophagus, vampire? Questionable. Wobbles very slightly. Yes, perhaps Take we could a just step back and observe. Then a um, low growl of a syllable emits from it. <sighs> Love you. 
Yeah, can we find something to act as like a shield, like to stop, like how do I put this? Like just put it above the sarcophagus. Uh, uh do you have anything on you? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. Is there anything around, like a stone slab or like? There were some tapestries and furniture. They were at least kind of occasionally solid. They were all on the other side of the shroud. Yeah. All right. The afterlife is sadly quite barren for that type of thing. Um, I will take intelligence academics from someone, please. I've got academics. Uh, I have a five total. I have five total. Div six. Four. Why don't we all roll it? (laughs) Okay, yeah, you can all roll. Actually, everyone who has at least a dot of academics. Two two degrees of success. There's none. No, it was Div 6. Oh. That's a botch for Poker Jack. Yeah, Poker Jack has no idea. Currently casting (laughs) his eyes around for a stone slab. (laughs) Woodrow and Reginald, your eyes meet. That's a terrifyingly familiar word. I believe both of you speak Latin. Aye. Or at least enough Latin. Enough Latin that you would recognize Ave, which means hello. (laughs) I wish I knew Latin so I could run away. What is this gibberish? Someone speak the Queen's English, please! Well, uh, Ave to you, I suppose. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> Sir, Sir Tango, I, I don't mean to interject, but why are we talking to it? We're, 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 we're talking to it? What's going on? Well, information's always useful. Uh, that's very true. It doesn't seem to be very mobile right now anyway, so we might as well talk before it tries to kill us. It begins grinding out in halting, thickly accented Latin, which I will transliterate to English. Uh, those of you who speak Latin can be assumed to be translating as best you can for those of you who don't. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, faithful Romans. Why do I have something bad to tell you? I think it might be Colonel Cuff. I uh, will assume that your chat back is not in Latin unless you specifically tell me so. Uh, Presumably yeah. it wants to la- it wants Latin because obviously it would speak Latin. Oh, well, I'd say in Latin to it. Uh, not Romans, actually, I'm afraid. And depending on where that fateful's targeted to, does, might not align with that either. Does Rome not rule these lands? Um, not anymore. Not where I'm from, actually. I am in Britannia. Yes. How? Oh. Ah. Oh. Well, of <laughs> course, <laughs> the Queen rules Britannia. <laughs> Is it still a Queen at the moment? Uh, King. 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 Right, I should have said the King's English. Cool, right? Um, <laughs> in English, um, Mr. Tango, um. This is a backwards and forwards of information trading. At the moment, it has only learned about us. Um, well, you know, just doing a bit of buttering up. We learned two things, sir. We know it can speak, and we know yeah. it's no. We know that it realizes where it is. Mm. <laughs> Strictly speaking, yes, well, uh, the King of England rules this territory now. Where is England? Uh, here. Albion! Can I roll a... Can I roll yeah. an academics roll? To Certainly. know if the... Know if I would know the designation of what England is. Um, how do you mean the designation of what England is? Well, in, in Roman times, this was Britannia Superior. Um, actually, England I, is Britannia... Well, uh, where we are is Britannia, Britannia Inferior, but England is largely Britannia Superior. Uh, yes, no, Britannia would be fine. Um, Albion, actually, I believe, also would get it, for the record. Uh, I'm not gonna... Re- I would have required okay. an academics role, but Carl already got it, so... 
I was even just taking the piss. <laughs> For those of you who, and you have a number of history graduates amongst you, um, you will be aware that the Anglo-Saxons didn't come over until the migration period, uh, and the concept of an England did not exist for most of Roman Britain. In fact, arguably but, it's... At, at all. It, England is the land of the Angles, therefore it's no England because there's no Angles. There would have been the Angle homelands when they were coming over as mercenaries, and there was also yeah, a brief... But, like, those, the conquest didn't aren't... happen literally immediately as well, so there was a period where a brief coexistence, but it only lasted, well, less than a century. <laughs> <clears throat> which uh, essentially puts your pal at some time long before the migration period, or at least uh, a while. Well, uh, yes, old Albion is England now. Uh, I'd guess you've been asleep for some, uh, give a rough hundreds of years. About 1,500. Shoot. Sure. 15. Hundred years is the world much changed. Yes. <laughs> Where would you like us to start on that bit? With I Rome think this gone. Is... There's a new continent to the uh, west. What? Hibernia. <laughs> uh, n- no. Slightly further west. I just raised my hand. Sorry. I believe some boys are playing with flying machines these days. <laughs> Actually, the. What? Uh, well, I was, oh, yeah, I was in the RAF. We course. have openly got uh, a flying corps in the army. Yeah, I was in it. I yeah, he was. He's, he's a World War One <laughs> veteran <laughs> pilot. <laughs> with the Romans gone. Which gods hold sway over Albion? But there is only one god. He's the unconquerable son. (coughs) God damn it. It was going going so well. Yeah, then Ewan's ripe lungs had to interrupt. Is the unconquerable son so invincible? Are you going to uh, require a academics role to add any detail about this, or can we be assumed as history graduates to know about such things? Um, depends what detail you want. Well, I was going to talk about how it's not the Unconquered Son, it's Jehovah, but whether or not he'd know who that is, so... Um, so what was your history? What was your degree in? It does the cla- pre- Presumably the classics. I will say the Unconquerable Sun is is not that obscure a part of uh, Roman history in any of its forms, so you are perfectly at liberty to know that. Afraid not. The Unconquered Sun is, well, conquered by the god from the east, Jehovah, who we call God. What is a Jehovah? Anyone else want to field this? I uh, never <laughs> my, really finished. My I first really instinct finished. was to I go did, into I read classics. I read classics, not uh, not theology. I'm afraid. Uh, well, it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> A god of light or war or the, the god of the god of all things, great and small. Yes, uh, omnipotent, uh, omniscient, omnibenevolent, apparently. And this god, where does he rule from? Why, from inside all of us. God is everywhere. Uh, it's heaven, sir. He rules from heaven. <laughs> well, yes, but also he is present in all beings. Vampires are like shit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did I wake up to? See- the interesting thing would be because we'd have just presumably done our classics education mm. on the education of the classical world, thanks to a lot of the reconstruction of stuff by the Victorians, who quite frankly made ninety percent of it up. Yep. So if we started talking about the mythology that he'd be used to, he'd probably be this vampire would probably be looking at us thinking, "What the f- are they on about?" Yep. And I think that. Are there any 
Britons left in Albion. Oh. oh, plenty. The Welsh, the Scots, the Irish. I would like to scoff at each one. Fierce, <laughs> ratcheting, for lack of a better word, laugh. The Welsh. In my tongue, I mean, this means foreigner. Like, deep inside, I'm just like, I like this guy. Gets it. Fundamentally, whatever you are, when our ancestors <coughs> came over, they displaced the natives and pushed them far into the hills to the west. Not all the way to Hibernia, as you call it, but up into the mountains, and that's where they stayed. So we called them the Welsh. Or rather, that's what they seem. I believe that's what they called us, and we just started calling them it back. Oh, wait, yeah, I think I fucked that up. I think it's a Saxon loan word. Yeah. Shit. Well. Well, I'll just say that we called it us, and then we can't. Call- they call our land Logir. <sighs> These have been distressing centuries. Well, so yeah, I'm just going to raise my hand again, <laughs> try and catch everyone's attention without alerting sarcophagus. <laughs> his his and eyes kind of like awkwardly try to flick down to you where you've positioned yourself just out of his range of vision. Sweet. Like, I'm doing, you know, that, like, cut-off signal where, like, you, you wave your hand, like, over your neck, like, no, just just cut. Cut, all right? Like, we, like <laughs> stop talking to this thing. <laughs> shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Kind of most of our campaigns can be described that way. At some point near the end, it's all like, shut up, shut up, shut up, don't tell the thing to do that. I find myself alone, trapped in a strange place and time. Mm, some might say it's a mercy compared to what you could find. Like slowly wheeling myself backwards. <laughs> I hear the squeaky one squawk in your strange tongue. I like this guy even more. Deep inside, I'm not saying about that. <coughs> mm. <coughs> He's not particularly uh, happy with our whole situation. Will you like... help me leave? I'll set out <laughs> dreams. <laughs> Oh, is that you making all those Roman fellas bring the corpses up the hill and they're like I have sent out dreams and messages requests for aid none have come like I know my mission but at this point like I am willing to sacrifice my mission and myself for the greater good this thing is staying in its box see I have a question to you sir or madam or whatever it is you prefer to be known as what pronouns do you want? Basically. Um, how did you get here? <coughs> In days of old, the unconquered sun came to these lands. My people fought and lost. Ah. Vini, vidi, vici, as they say. Mm, indeed. I was trapped, torpid and asleep, humiliated by a magnanimously irritating foe. I suppose irritatingly magnanimous is probably the better way to phrase that. Only in recent times have I found my mind stirring. I have bid my strength long enough and then put out a a need, a request for my people to come and free me. I had not realized that I had been so long away. And I suppose the follow-up question, of course, is what exactly are you planning to do if you get out? (coughs) I would have wished to rule my kingdom again as in ancient times, admittedly integrating into the new Roman order. This does not seem plausible. Not sure where you're getting new Roman order from, the old mate, but uh, there's, there's no Rome here. <laughs> yeah, you, you told him there was no Rome, but you also asked him what was his plan when he got out. Ah, right, okay. 
he doesn't he doesn't really have a new one at this point you've just wrecked his old one by telling him that there is no rome and you're 1500 years in the future not a couple of centuries uh so he's having a bit of a time yeah, understandably what if we could offer you the ability to integrate into new society uh, okay just just hear me <clears> out <throat> just hear me out is my face palm sound <laughs> In a I think mutual I'd, I'd beneficial al- agreement. I'd also like to turn to uh, Pope Jack at this one, just like with a very quizzical look on my face. Now, our mission was to, if it could be useful to us, procure it. No? Actually, switching to English, um, <laughs> one of our objectives, <coughs> as, as Tango has rightly pointed out, is to secure and use it for the order if possible. It is clearly a sentient being of great power. Therefore, we should try to be amenable and see if we can come to terms into which it could help us equally. We could see? learn about this new species that we haven't had any contact with. I'm ja- uh, and- Jackie Chan memeing right now. Jackie Chan meme! <laughs> <laughs> I know and merely um- one thing, sir. I serve gentlemen, and gentlemen do not make Faustian bargains. I'm not saying we make a bargain. I'm saying we make a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> I would like to join you with Jackie Chan meme. As you bicker amongst yourselves for a moment, the, the creature grows a tad impatient and reaches out. I would like to offer a bargain. It's more or less the exact wording it uses. What sort of bargains? For a start, we want you to stop with those dreams. I can no long uh, I can no more stop them than I can stop the ripples in a lake once a stone has been cast. Yeah. They will fade. If you free me I can offer at least one of you the gift of my blood. Immortal well now that you blood. mention it <laughs> <laughs> Immortal, ever living life. Stuck in this shithole. Magical power and tutelage. You give me a willpower back. (laughs) (laughs) I really need to get out of here. Out of character. (laughs) Like, I want it so bad! In character. Kill it with fire. Just kill it with fire. Whoa! How handy! I've got some fire right here! What if the real reason Pope Jack doesn't freeze to death in the later campaign is because he's actually a vampire? <laughs> Some plot holes. I mean, 1500 years ago, he's got to be, what, like, maybe 6th generation, 7th? I mean, depending. Um, like, it could, like, go either way, to be fair. Like, they yeah. could have bred, like, friggin' rabbits. But, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, age aside, like, he's going to be pretty fucking powerful, right? There's an arguable correlation, at the least, between age mm. and generation, yes. Yeah. Like... He might even be more powerful than Samir. He might be able to hit things in melee. Hey, hey, hey now. Samir was pretty fucking powerful. It was just the, the hitting things. Yeah, he well, just could doesn't things. actually transfer when uh, when sired. That said, Mentor does. Oh, well, does not transfer, but does make things easier. <laughs> what if, uh, more than the gift of blood, we could form a concrete alliance between yourself and our guild? We would need some assurances that you don't rampage around, cause more dreams or untold death. Oh, out of character, we don't even know what bloodline he <laughs> No, nope, we don't know about bloodlines in character. <laughs> I don't we know, character. We know basic human stuff about vampire. That is it. We have no idea about bloodline or anything. <coughs> I'm pretty sure I made a deal with something to get my starlight powers. <laughs> Remember my rough backstory? I, I mean, internally, I... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's been real bad. Yeah, I completely agree, but... Uh... <laughs> I have no wish to be constrained. Not now. <clears throat> Never again. Freedom is indeed the desire of all things. How many deaths are too many in this day and age? 
Well, we did kill almost an entire town. (laughs) It depends on your line of work, you see. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sir. You're saying we killed an entire town when I think everyone present here was (laughs) at at the sodding Somme. We've just lived through the most devastating war in human history. Yes, let's say it depends on your line of work. Mm, For instance, if you did ally with our guild, we could give you good opportunity to do what you please without disturbing the status quo or drawing attention to yourself. Uh, It sounds like the standards have not changed so much. I will take a small village and live a life as an idle blood god out of the way. (laughs) <laughs> Far from prying. <laughs> I'm afraid messengers and communication is something else which is quite considerably advanced. How fast can a horse travel in one day? Not as uh, fast as a telegraph. Yes, yes. I do not I'm afraid without word. even need for animals, we can communicate through wire and thunder. <laughs> yes. We shoot lightning. Near instant. We shoot lightning into machines through rock and it speaks. I fancy uh, you don't do that yet. Oh no, I guess you kind of yeah, do. That, yeah, that's a telegram. I mean, like, we've at the very least got, like, Morse code like, tele- yeah, like, stuff. it's a yeah. telegram. I suspect you are <laughs> lying to me. Mortals Very do not long. have this level of magic. It's not magic. It's technology and science, my good fellow. Yes, I mean, the I don't mind think that... has advanced quite far. Yeah. These are not separate subjects. Uh, I'm going to need a pretty heavy, um, <laughs> what's it called, charisma, charisma expression difficulty. I'm going to call it diff nine to even remotely convince him of this. You've just uh, come out here with <laughs> I do dice on that. And we said magics via lightning. <laughs> I've got three dice on that, and I'll and I've got a willpower. Well, the thing is, we've got examples. We've got guns. Yeah, that doesn't yeah, prove the no. existence of lightning message, though it is strong yeah. correlating evidence. I'll give strong you. correlation that we have thunder. <coughs> we have thunder sticks, therefore thunder message. Also. Oh, I have my torch. electric yes. torch as well. Oh torch. yeah, <laughs> yes. He holds the sun in the palm of his hand. To show that it gives no heat. You've also well, got magnetic, less heat. You, 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 you got your magnetic doohickey thing, right? That does does magicy things, but I'm sure it's got modern yeah, science not, built not, into it as not well. I'm sure that's uh, the best example of uh, science, that magnet. I'm <laughs> sorry, what, not, were you, uh, what were you doing with the torch? I could just turn it on and show it to him. Yes. Don't, don't blind the poor man. He's just woken yeah. up. I won't be pointing it directly at him. Oh, Nick, you have an awful lot of sympathy for the thing that reads uh, and put things into your mind. Once again, just well, put it no, out no, no, he's just woken up. He can't move. He's asking for help. Therefore, we have the upper hand right now. <laughs> he right hisses. Now. He hisses as you blast the light. Even through the veil of death, I can see your weapon is <laughs> powerful. <laughs> I, I'm so happy that that's the turn it took. Like, inside I'm laughing and crying at the same time. Nevertheless, <laughs> light spells are not the same as instant communication between minds. Well, technically they work under the same principle, I suppose. Yes, the, the electricity comes from similar to light, travels on long wires, and then gets to the other end, and is interpreted in it being there and not being there, and from this simple code, you can extrapolate characters and then language. I'm just going to be sidling closer and closer to uh, 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 what's his face? Nigel Thornbury? I don't... Uh, Sebastian Thornbury. Yeah, I was going to say Sebastian Thornbury. Uh, also, oh, I need to. He's, he's not really capable of understanding what you're trying to no. explain to him, you Nicholas. Not without practical examples. He's... A sleepy old man, fifteen hundred years in the future, who yeah. doesn't really understand the concept of electricity, let alone yeah. lights traveling along wires. Opatax are only like, starting to catch up on it. He's still like, yeah. surely this is simple enough, right? It's fair. He's he's actually honestly pretty fuzzy on this modern conception of light, as far as I'm aware. Um, <laughs> it's not that there wasn't any knowledge on that in the period when he was 
moving about, uh, moving about, but it wasn't really radiating where he was unliving at the time. Hmm. And uh, we did invent these as well. I'll pull out my pistol, show it around. Just shoot him a few times, please, for the love of God, shoot him a few times. <laughs> like a tiny bow and arrow of sorts, but much more powerful. Just shoot it into the abyss below. <laughs> he hisses again. Softer this time. Surely that should make him more hissy, because it's fire. Yeah. That's not fire. Actually, Sorry. I'm holding fire. Shouldn't he be hissing and scr- freaking out about that? Well, you've not been like going anywhere near him. You've been keeping very separate. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um... But yeah, no, guns definitely are not fire and do not count as fire in any way, shape, or form. Um, guns are actively, actively less harmful to vampires than basically every other weapon in the setting. Mm. They definitely don't take rot shrek from them. Uh, remember, guns do bashing, bashing damage, damage halved, rounded down. Now, he doesn't know that, but he's also not instinctively afraid of it. No more so than he is of any other loud noise. Oh, the temptation just to try to set him on fire, but I'm terrified because we're in the underworld. I'm keeping the fire with me, ready <laughs> to strike at a moment's uh, notice. You say it was a... Acts of cheap <clears throat> conjurers. What did you say your guild was? Uh, Carl, why don't you conjure I, a small amount of fire? Hmm. I was going to uh, say, I am thoroughly offended at being called a cheap conjurer. Yeah, because... Uh, well, well, we call these arts uh, science these days, but uh, we're from the Guild of Hatters. <laughs> Hatters. It seems just grand and noble order of the haberdasher. I tip my hat. Haberdasher, something like that. Tip my hat. I do not tip my hat. I believe it was the most ancient and noble order of That's the hat. It. Yeah, it's part of the overarching guild of haberdashery. Yeah, the, yeah, I was getting the two like smashed together. So I'm just checking for the manual to uh, summon flames. Summon the fire. Hit the vampire with fire. Well, this guy seems all right. We just need to educate him a bit. <laughs> we can't deal. Do you know how many times I've heard that? Now, <laughs> he seems a reasonable chap. I'm sure we can talk this out. <laughs> Young Nicholas, if it were anyone else saying that, I might, might believe them. But not from you, sir. Not <laughs> from you. Now, you don't have any proof in this setting that there's any worry here at all. Well, you just have a certain... Je ne sais quoi. Yeah. <laughs> now, we know what he is. It's fine. He's not going to possess me. Not a ghost. Also, how do you know he's not going to possess you? Vampires can totally possess <laughs> you. Oh, fuck, they can, can they? Yep. <laughs> Present, It'll be bitch. fine. Metagaming. He wants information. He wants contacts. We can help him with that. Oh, and well, in turn, he can teach us about vampires. It's a two-way street. All good. And if he doesn't want to cooperate, he can stay in the ground. Eh. Tell me, why have you... Uh, actually, he's still waiting on an answer to the guild question. Oh, no, you did tell him. Yeah, sorry, never mind. Oh, yeah, with the hat guys. Tell me, why do you come to me across the shroud? Well, well if I'm being you... totally honest, there was a werewolf outside. But we're actually here to investigate those dreams of yours. <laughs> His would, pupils would the, narrow to tiny say, pinpricks. Would Latin have a word for werewolf? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of foundational werewolf mythology comes from what would have been Illyria at the time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure where is a uh, Latin derivative anyway. No, where is Saxon for man? Oh. Saxon for man, it's man-wolf. This is our concept I mean, of werewolf. Yeah. That's why when you the, mo- the money you pay in reparation after you kill someone is a were-geld. It's just man cash. It's also why it's... Oh, it's cash. Oh, it translates surprisingly well to... Oh, I was thinking of 2022. 
though uh, wasn't actually what the tax that we paid the Vikings was called, though commonly addressed as such. Um, we paid them, God, it begins with H, I forget the actual word for it, but more uh, is better translated as booty. Uh, um, so I know that plunder was taken from uh, an Indian dialect, like straight up, so we plundered the word plunder. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, the old saying. And the word pajamas. Three languages stacked on top of a, uh, stacked on top of each other in a trench coat, pretending to be one. My favorite one is English is the language that beats up other languages in back alleys and rifles through their pockets for loose grammar. So, uh, pretty fucking accurate. Yeah. So uh, basically, he can communicate the concept, uh, and in fact, the term he uses isn't werewolf. The term he uses is lupine. Very specifically. <clears throat> I mean, it's not like he's going to call them Garu. Sorry. His, uh, <laughs> his eyes narrow to tiny, blackened pinpricks. Oh, I think it's a... In my lands. Yeah. Um, in your lands or on your hill, you see, more specifically. You see the tiny, like, engraved, almost Han Solo-esque clawed fingers on the sarcophagus <laughs> begin to just dimly twitch in rage. The stone creaking and chafing against itself. <laughs> On my barrow! Oh, I'm not sure if using fire would just make it more angry now. Almost In certainly. The but vampire fire. hunters experience uh, fight or flight yes. is the general response. So either more angry or an urge to flee, but they tend to have very intense emotional reactions to fire. Yeah, my sandwiches got any garlic in them? Sorry? Uh, my sandwiches no, got garlic. So. I no, mean, remember there was de- there was back, deliberately you know, no garlic in the well. entirety of the town. Was, yeah, nah. garlic also isn't one hundred percent. Has to have that. Garlic does nothing in World of Darkness as well. Unless, yeah. you, have a, unless you have a specific flaw. Yeah, that said, said well, yeah. it is extremely common misinformation to the point that the Camarilla actively encourages the idea that garlic is effective, specifically to get people to use it more when there are others. That, that, yeah, it, it's, it's a deliberate misinformation thing. So garlic would be a valid thing for him to want in character. So meta, yes, outside of extremely specific vampires, it does nothing. Other than taste good. Yes. Uh, actually, if someone's got all specs activated for the sense of uh, for their sense of smell, and you hit them with enough garlic at the same time, you could probably That's make them. A, yeah. Um, but just you know. like from now on, I'm eating all the onions and garlic. Gunions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a it's moment, onion though, and garlic crossbreed. Like, haven't you yeah, heard? I, of it? I was exactly thinking a gunion, uh, a gunion, an onion garlic crossbreed, a uh, crossbreed that's just a garlic bulb the size of an onion. Oh, it's it yes. garlic with different layers. Oh, By anywho, the way, Chris, you got it. Anywho, so what are we doing, folks? I'm crying deep down in my soul. <laughs> the lack of existence of the gunion. Um, well, yeah, but I mean, like, more specific to the situation. <laughs> yes, the kind. Tell me, what can you uh, tell us of your kind and your times? Our customs forbid me to speak to any but another of my kind. Free me. Allow me to take one of you as my child, and I shall educate them in the ways of our people. Uh, I'm going to be honest, in the real world, you're under quite a lot of mud. I'm not that convinced we even could save you with ease. (laughs) He sort of gently stone blinks, which is quite an effort, considering the lack of movement range on the eyelids. But the sacrifice, I receive a steady stream of droplets. Right. How many more of those did you need? They come so slowly. Perhaps one full vessel and I could pull myself free. I'm just going to be shaking my head in a, no, that's not happening. This is good information to ask about. I mean, yeah, but at the same time. But at the same time, no, none of this. (laughs) Look, obviously I briefly thought about immediately pushing someone on the coffin, but I'm not going to do it. I mean, I I thought about offering myself, but I'm not going to do it. You're also all on the wrong side of the shroud for it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Doesn't matter. Yeah, that, that stops us. That stopped us before. That'll stop us again. <laughs> um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure how mutually beneficial these deals are going to get for us in the long run now. Yes, if you're unable to tell us anything about your your kind or anything like that, then communication between our noble society and, and yourself can quite difficult. You would leave me here? Trapped no, no, of alone. course not. We would not leave you alone, of course not. We're not barbaric. Mm, good lord. But obviously we could do, if you're not a little helpful. Right, deep no, down no. inside, like, I'm just questioning playing chicken with this, like, millennia old killing machine. <laughs> Internally, I'm debating how much blood will be caused if I have to shoot someone in the head. <laughs> Vile. <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps I could send another dream. Another. Yep. Wider pulse. God damn it. You no, just we don't fucking... want any of that. You see, it's your powers like that that make me think you might be a little dangerous. Yes. And it's also these dreams that have brought us here in the first place anyway. It's drawn the attention of our society. Any bigger ones, and there could be a fair few more of us coming. My dreams were perfectly crafted. If the Romans still ruled, no one would have noticed a thing. Yes, but they don't rule, <coughs> and people have noticed. So, whoops the daisies Tell me more of this, England. Now, now. Well, let's just say, the important thing you need to know is, oh. um, we're currently being extraordinarily reasonable for our line of work. And quite yeah, frankly, yeah. if we turned in this report and prevented any more blood getting to you, much more professional people who are much better at it could probably come here and finish you. Not that we can't necessarily do it ourselves. You threaten me after no, I I'm, give you the world. I'm trying to educate you on how times have changed, see? Yes. Our, our empire already stretches across most of the world anyway, so <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. I will not bow to loathsome lying kind. Ah, no, 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 no. We are not saying that you should bow to us at all. We are talking about our mutual beneficial agreements. Tell me, you how much do one... you dislike this light I've got? I'm going to shine it at him. I'm going to do a speedy GM roll here. <laughs> First into the Shadowlands and rips us to get a hunt. Get a... Oh, it's not a D100. It's about to get a hundo. Get a one. <laughs> botch, 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 botch. Botch the rock check. Botch, botch. I GM rolled it. That is a simple failure. Ah, botch the rock track. Botch the rock. Carl, break out the fire. He screeches. <laughs> also, I... does Cree get a willpower point back for being curious? I've been asking a lot of questions. Come on, sir, Jim. Just the one. Just one little pity willpower, sir. What aspect of your curiosity have you satisfied or attempted to satisfy through this conversation? Uh, acquiring new vampires. occult knowledge. I see. What occult knowledge have you actually got? Well, I've been trying to get information on the vampires. And his the kind. proper names of the werewolves. I don't think that was really telegraphed. <laughs> uh, he found out that it was him producing the dreams and not an artifact. Let me double check curiosity. <laughs> but I'm leaning against at the moment. Rob, then, yourselves for just a second. If only we had shitloads of dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate weapon against them. I mean, don't you? I mean, um, how many dots in armory do you have? I need more dynamite. Uh, I do want to point out that, like, as it has been pointed out, we are the other side of the shroud. So, like, I'm not sure if this is just a projection of it or something, or if anything we do here would even remotely affect it beyond psychologically. Yeah, I'm it, not sure if it knows what side we're on either. Yeah, I think it does. It, it probably it, does. It did ask you. Mm. Uh, and it can clearly affect us mm, due to um, our lower class friend's injury. 
He did get a bit cold. He did get a little bit cold, didn't he? Yeah, again, I think, boo-boo. like, I don't know if that was, like, an actual thing for, like, because, again, this is all meta. Like, an actual thing from it, or if it was a case of, like, the shroud manifesting the sense of what it is. Uh, I think, at least from a character perspective, it definitely seems like it was him that caused the 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 near frostbite that uh, Holborn <laughs> experienced. It wouldn't be a giant leap of logic to make that he caused it. Yeah, he wasn't even awake at the time. So, ha! Huh. I mean, it could be reflexive. I mean, it could be, but like, I think it's more like a reflection of like the, the state that it's in, sort of thing. Yeah, I think in character, both positions are pretty valid. I'm having a hard time finding where curiosity. Came oh. From. You know what, there's a chance it's not even a real one. I just made it up. Yeah, just added it. I mean, that's not invalid, though. Um, I'm pretty sure we've looked up curiosity before. I feel like we have. It helps. My concept is seeks new occult knowledge whenever... Yeah, you've, you've been playing seeking occult knowledges. Yeah, all right. Well, in that case, I'm, I'm going to say no, I'm afraid, as I, I don't think you've actually got any new occult knowledge. You, you've been talking to the guy for a while, but so far all you've d- been able to determine is that he's not particularly clued in on modern knowledge. <clears throat> Wherever he is, he seems to have been alive a long time. How about my demeanour of being aloof? <laughs> been in casual conversation with a vampire? <laughs> Shot a light at him? You have to really do well to get uh, willpower out of demeanour. <laughs> right. Raw, you can't even. We just do it on occasion. Demeanour is a raw Now that. Uh, uh, as I stated, uh, this is not uh, um, asking you to defend the knee. We are asking for a mutual beneficial agreement here. But, you know, so both parties will benefit from the relationship. Uh, uh, he, we will not bend to you, you will not bend to us. He's, in addition to having been clearly growing irate with, with that line of reasoning, um, he's just kind of screaming at the moment. You blasted him with a torch. I'm still monologuing at him. Screaming and flexing his fingers, which are growing steadily more mobile with rage. Hmm. The original re. <laughs> Fascinating. Indeed. You see how the other fingers are wiggling more? Hmm, very interesting. Perhaps we should uh, leave for a while and let him cool off. Yes, I, I think you're right. Um, just explore this structure more? Yes. Well, hmm. Do have the <laughs> we can't go back. Especially back to English. Yes, we do have the issue of trying to get out of here. Um, Mr. Tango, is there, are you sure there's no, no other way for us to, to leave? Oh, I'm quite sure. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I would trust the door wizard with his own wizarding doors. This is, this is a shame. Hey, screamy fellow. If you can somehow give me a bit of power, I can just open a door right here to the skin lands. He's he's just kind of screaming and flexing his things at this point, even even with the torch presumably taken off him. Well, ah, oh, I'm quite a number of him. I suppose we may as well go exploring then. Yeah, so we'll be back in a bit. Only screaming. <laughs> <laughs> You, sir, have earned yourself a time out. <laughs> yes. You sit there and think about what you've done. Frenzy lasts for the seed unless otherwise uh, interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, keep the scene going. So with that, the scene ends as the lot of you file back out up, uh, down the causeway and then up the stairwell, which takes more like an hour, hour 20 to climb compared to the 45 minutes to descend. Seeming so very incredibly long as you go. I would like to reflect upon the nature of my wheelchair. Like, I know it's been mentioned several times that this just, like, magically works, but, like, I'm still, like, enamored by how I can, like, operate on stairs. Well, you know what they say. Totally, yes. Solves what engineering can't? <laughs> it is incredible how the stairs seem to seem to mould to allow you to wheel up them. You definitely 
Sorry. Can I get a point of willpower back for Enigma, either because I have magically created a functioning wheelchair in the afterlife, or because I expected someone else to come up with a, you know what they say, and then... No, did, but, you know. Enigma, regain a point of willpower whenever someone is perplexed by actions that you take that later turn out to be a fruitful endeavour. Well, that sounds like the wheelchair to me. The wheelchair has very thoroughly already paid off, and also no one was perplexed by you making that. I know, but I wanted to try anyway. <laughs> That's really bad. We'll just expect things from you because you're a lower class. Well, because he's a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, that as well. I think you've been the least enigmatic. But yeah, I mean, I it, all, it always happens, right? Like, I, I think there's generally in every chronicle that I've ever run, I think mostly only like 50%, 40% of the people have a nature that really lines up with how they end up playing the character. It's, for the record, something you can ask to, to change within reason. E.g., should you want to take Rebel as a nature which is exactly how you've been role-playing your character. I shall take Rebel as my nature, then. If that is all good with the GM. Uh, yeah, I think that's perfectly fair. To catch you up, a the Rebel is a malcontent, never satisfied with the status quo or the system as it is. He does everything in his power to undermine authority. Regain a point of willpower whenever your actions adversely affect your chosen opposition. Man, I should have just been fucking... You could have been drowning in willpower. Yes, <laughs> yes, you would. Oh, dear. What I love, though, is that goes completely against... Benji gets a minus three whenever Ollie gets a willpower point. No, Benji only no, gets no, no, a no. minus I three. Get... Yeah, sorry. I only oh, get a minus three when you don't behave like a gentleman. Yeah. Oh, I see. So it's fine when he does it. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, he's not a gentleman. He can be a bullshit little shit all he wants. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, expected. And with that, the five of you arrive back on the, the ground floor. The lupine is nowhere to be seen, but you can still hear the legionnaire and the storm outside screaming and trying to get at you, but being picked up again and again by the winds, the howling maelstrom tossing them, even as they attempt to access you. A thoroughly Sisyphean task. I'm going to shine my torch on him briefly. Click it on him. See what happens. No, no major reaction, and it's also kind of difficult to get the torch on him. The beam cuts a lot further than it did in the Skinlands, but not actually that far. Uh, plus, he's really getting whipped around quite a lot. He keeps getting, like, spiked into the floor. The gales are howling, tossing him this way and that. It's kind of difficult to keep the beam on him for longer than a microsecond. You know, it's probably quite lucky we came in inside this thing. You don't say. Makes me concerned. It is, for the record, entirely possible to open a doorway straight into death in the underworld, or double <laughs> death, the re death one. one. Uh, so your fears were entirely legitimate, and if you'd opened the doorway and walked out into the maelstrom, that would have been you getting spiked into the floor, and you are not made of gooey, healy ectoplasm. <laughs> It's not doing the ghost much good, is it? But it is. He's not dead yet. Yet. Honestly, sort of uh, aimlessly wandering this structure, looking for anything interesting. So there were Escher-esque staircases leading up, up, up. I think it went a mile high. You can continue to wander up those, if you like, though they are banisterless. I'll wander up them, slow and steady, and as crippled as I am. (laughs) I would like to stay as close to Tango as possible. Still wary of his proclamation that should you grow lost, he is the only way to find your way, and if you can't find him again, you will be trapped in the afterlife. Yes, don't have to try to stay there. (laughs) The four of you follow the crippled man this way. I stride confidently behind him, knowing I've got the fire. (laughs) Therefore he will want to stay close to me. As we are past the hour, the fire is now finally starting to die. Slowly, but you can see that the light has begun to dim. Those of you with wounds feel them starting to ache. What well, ache more than they already did, being thoroughly fresh. <clears throat> and that stench of rot is growing. 
ever more powerful, uh, ever more pungent. You know, but got a question because uh, my 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 history is pretty shite. The Olympic flame. How long? How, the Olympics have been around for ages, but the Olympic <laughs> flame itself. Um, oh, that always goes out. That always goes out, and also the whole flame thing is a uh, like Nazi thing. Oh lord! I mean, okay. Nazi in origin, but so is concentrated orange juice and Fanta. No, no, I know. Um, it's just that the the, the procession of the flame to the Olympics after it's lit by the sun on Mount Olympus is a sort of Nazi. Yeah, era. yeah. So is concentrated orange juice and Fanta. It's it's also not a Nazi ceremony in the modern day at all. No, I know. It's just it was invented at the Nazi in, period rather than the moment. Again, so, it, it, so in, are lots of things. In 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 current uh, game years. I'm sure it, it's perceived as a, a sort of honour to carry and so forth in it. Oh, sorry, I was completely missing Benji's point. His his issue is that it, it isn't like, oh, it's tainted by the Nazis, um, because I would say if anything's been thoroughly reclaimed, the Olympic flame, hilariously bad as it is, sure. Uh, it's that it's 1919, um, and the Nazi party currently consists of like 50 people. Anton Drexler, that's who consists of the Nazi party right there now. There you go, so it's not big. Uh, so the Olympic flame doesn't exist as a concept. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I was completely missing your thing, Benji. I was thinking this is a really weird line in the sand to draw. I don't get why you're so like. I'm not a big fan of the Olympic flame, but I don't hate it. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's my bad. Uh, so either way, um, these uh, stairs doing? Have they led us to a library? I, I, That'd be neat. I'm going to go, but I want to hear what your Nicholas is, is asking. Because yes. he, he kind of uh, either way I, and then I, just teed it off. Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out flames slowly going out. If we can stoke the flames with emotion instead and possibly keep it going for longer. If we can find the emotions that match the flame's colour because <laughs> I've been playing about a little bit with this. Then maybe point. we can keep the flame going for a bit longer. Keep ourselves warm, it seems, and stop our Whisper wounds to, aching. You know, Reginald seemed to get a bit unusually hot and bothered when he was a bit angry earlier. It is quite easy to make him angry. <laughs> yes. I also said that my magic is normally channeled through anger. Fucking doctors. But, um, I could maybe try to stoke it a little bit. I've been playing about with this. We could see what I could do. If that's okay with you, you are the um, reigning expert on on this place. I don't want to be doing anything that's too um, dangerous, but um, I, I don't want to be trapped here forever. But uh, from what I've seen, it's possible, maybe. I'm happy to watch you try. Mm-hmm. Great then. Um, well then, Reginald, <sighs> I hand the flame here. Certainly, sir. Thank you. Take the torch. <laughs> Try to visualize and channel not my magic, but the anger I'd normally use the magic. Like, the, the hatred I have towards the fucking doctors who fucked up my arm. Okay, so this is Try going to... to, to some extent, use your curse magic regardless, but I will take a... What do you roll for your uh, curse firing? Intelligence uh, manipulation and oh, intimidation. Goodness. Manipulation and intimidation. Interesting. I'm so used to intelligence and cult being the default. I really like manipulation plus intimidation. Cool. Um, I will take manipulation, intimidation, diff seven. Okay. Try not to botch. Yeah, I know, right? Watch, 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 watch. We're all good. And I have specialist in that I have a uh, manipulation status or intimidation officer. We'll go with officer, I think. So that's going to be a lot of success. I guess it is somewhat related to you. Well, yeah, your foundational experience is the loss of your arm in the war. I will let you have your officer specialty. So Thank it's you. one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes. For a moment, everything's still. 
even outside, seems to grow quiet. And then... The torch roars to life from a gradually guttering flame to an almighty inferno, all but encompassing your head, causing you to cry out and duck and hold it at arm's length as it billows upwards and outwards. Not a fireball, but a giant sustained bonfire held on the edge of what I believe was a gun it was wrapped around. Yep. A rifle. A rifle. Ah! Ending in what now looks like nothing so much as a colossal, portable, eight-success bonfire. There we go. I think that'll keep it going for a little while. Um. I look a little <laughs> gobsmacked at this. I didn't. I wasn't even sure that would work. And yet you feel yourself, uh, Timothy Popajack, emptier. The rage that you'd been uh, focusing, channeling, is a bit harder to access. Ooh. Uh, something for your no is hard to back with my anger at this point. Well, as it uh, literally burns away at the flame's wick. Yeah, I should be careful with that. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's last... Hopefully longer than the last one. <laughs> I'll have to see. I must question, sirs, what exactly is our plan? We, we seem to be running out of options, because soon we will run out of food. Well, we have sandwiches. Um, and and we once we are done with the sandwiches, uh, what will we have? Oh, well, well I'm afraid, uh, to put it bluntly, currently we're totally doomed and fully stuck here. Now... Over the course of arrest and so forth, and we normally are able to regain some manner of control and power over our <laughs> abilities, I do believe. So I'm hoping, being in this place, and our, our, our friend earlier's uh, dreams don't affect us here, so maybe we might be able to get a good night's rest with someone on watch. And to be fair, we only really need um, uh, Mr. Tango to have the actual rest, so long as he gets a full night's rest. It means that he may be able to actually produce a portal out of here uh, once he is fully rested. Are we near a window? Uh, we are... If we're near a window, I'm just going to look out of the window and be like, "Uh huh, okay, yeah, cool." We are near a number of thick, deep-set windows, more like I mean... tiny murder hole portals to the outside. And uh, for the record, Tango, you are very well aware that. Uh, <clears throat> The underworld is anything but a place for restful slumber, and though it is hypothetically possible to uh, regain willpower while sleeping here, with your Aegis now gone, it is unlikely, and it wouldn't last for a good night's sleep anyway. Yes, unfortunately, I don't think trying to rest here would really work out, good friend. Oh, Even we need to find... I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, I guess we need to find out... Um... Another way to uh, stoke your magical abilities, then, don't we? Um, I'm sure I just need to find something interesting. <laughs> yes, well, if that's what you feel drives you, then we'll, we'll follow that, then. Whatever inspires. Yes. Inclusive follow your guts. Event, if I might interject, presumably that thing down there seems to think it's being ca- it was ca- being held... Almost prisoner, perhaps cursed to lie here forever for long eons where even death itself may bury. Might there be, in, in that case, some sort of incantation or carved curse that might prove to us the source of this? And could you not examine it, sir, to satiate your curiosity and gain your power? Uh, perhaps if we could find such a thing... Yeah sure we could have a look. You've uh, been continuing up the long stairways winding towards the top of the tower for some time at this point. Discussing your situation and possibilities. Looking into small rooms as you pass them, but most a uh, little more than platforms over the drop down below. It's not until you come to what is essentially a tiny shrine on the roof of the tower. 
it juts out from the very top. A single forlorn spike, just barely wide enough to fit all five of you in. And there, on this side of the shroud, long since destroyed, lies a doorway. A doorway covered in strange runes. There you go, sir. Did I not say? Fascinating indeed. Want to study the runes in the door? I will take intelligence academics, please. Difficulty... Difficulty 8. Can I give him an assist? Sure. That'll be plus one pool. Right? I assist as well, or is it one assist per... Ah, uh, he's only rolled. Actually, two successes. Um, <clears throat> so... There's certainly nothing Romanesque, uh, nor are they the more traditional Norse runes, though I guess those aren't super fashionable at this point anyway. <clears throat> They're somewhat Celtic in patterning, but you struggle to recognise them. They're like nothing you've ever seen before. Nevertheless, with some discussion, you're able to... Uh, Guestimate some degree of meaning. The doorway is marked as a passage for spirits flying in through the skies, through a little window in the wall of the shrine. The intent being that if they're trapped on the other side, they can use the doorway to access the land of the dead. Presumably when the tower came down, the doorway was lost. It does, however, hum with a strange emotional resonance when you touch your hands to it. A deep and forlorn longing for a long-lost purpose. Well, do. Beeline! Sorry? Beeline! Make a beeline for it. <clears throat> uh, intelligence. What's the most appropriate pairing here? I mean, it probably wouldn't work, like, but it's one of those, you know, like, all once out sort of, like, yeah. I, I, I'm not thinking. I, I, I wouldn't yeah, it's go for it just yet. Um, I'm going to call that one Intelligence uh, Athletics, please, Sebastian Thornbury. You don't need to worry about your pool malices. Uh, Thank you. Difficulty six. If it would actually like to display me. Okay, on. Uh, two plus three. Oh, that's not terrible. Got five. Um... Uh, I mean, two successos. You are quite a ways up. If it does work, you would no longer be quite a ways up in short order. Now, do I have anything to makeshift a parachute? <laughs> <laughs> no, my polio blanket was taken from me! It's still there, it's just a giant Burning. bonfire. <laughs> Burning in anger. A uh, bonfire that has presumably been asked to stand politely outside of the small room so that the rest of you don't burn to death. Yes. But, yeah. Uh, that's my little so, blanket for you. Sorry. Does this thing seem all related to the dream curse? It could be. The runes are somewhat unclear. It seems to be something to do with uh, amplifying spiritual energy, souls. It's questionable. You're Likely dealing with a long dead ancient magical system. Well, I don't know anything about how to disable or stop it. Intelligence occult difficulty nine, please. Can I give him an assist? Also do sure. I would like to. Um, what's the option? Hinder, if possible. Uh, uh, how are you hindering? That would be a PvP action, surely. <laughs> It depends how he's hindering, but probably. I mean, I, I was 
partially taking the piss, but it, it's mostly like crazed ramblings at this point. Like I'm starting to crack with all of this now. Like fair. So, uh, what's my net assist? One from Benji. Uh, net plus two pool mod, I believe that was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm not actively trying to stop you. It's more just like reflection of me, like kind of. That's fair. As uh, Sebastian Thornbury begins to break and wail in the background, as the three of you begin brainstorming ways to somehow break this gateway. That is alarmingly a net of two successes on difficulty nine with no willpower. <clears throat> you go over numerous magical theorems and formulae. You brainstorm different ways that you could potentially destroy this ancient and arcane device until eventually the mechanic who was there brainstorming with you as he was assisting bolts upright with a moment of pure clarity realizing something that has happened at least once and which can potentially happen again walks up to the doorway and begins trying to like wrench a stone out of it. Uh, Ollie, I will take a strength athletics, please. Sure. Uh, strength athletics. Uh, Going to be diff six. Yeah, I make that. For all that it looks like stone, the memory of the doorway seems nowhere near as structurally sound. And after you uh, a short amount of firm tugging, you're able to simply pull a large runic brick away. The rest of it collapses in short order thereafter. And the air takes on a slight bloody tang. Mm. <laughs> I will take Perception Occult from someone, please. Diff 7. I can roll that. Uh, that would be seven for me. I'd be ninth. Um, I think I'd be seven, yeah. Uh, one, two, three, two, three successes. It's a moment later before you realise that you don't feel oppressed, or no more so than you have on your prior trips to the Shadowlands. You no longer feel nearly as trapped, except insofar as you are currently literally trapped. And when you think about leaving the area, it's no longer a strange, unfathomable notion. You're not completely certain, but you're fairly positive that you've at least done something to affect the mutant nature of the vampire's spiritual curse. Whatever this ghostly ruin was doing, it's not doing it anymore. Oh. You know what, guys? I think we might have done it. We've certainly done something. So oh, we've done it, it all right! <laughs> Yeah. Can we go gloat at the vampire thing? Uh, oh, yes! Why don't curiosity? we just go back and taunt it, why don't we? <laughs> does, does this cover curiosity? It's, it's a positive outcome from his curiosity of looking around. I feel like you're kind of metagame hunting the willpower a bit much, honestly. I, I brought up because I thought it might fulfil it. As well. We are a little bit, but we're also trapped in the Shadowlands. It's, yes, it's not. Um, it's not you specifically asking it, Nicholas. It's, it's very valid to ask for. Um, I see. I see. It's it's the like activity. I, I feel like you all are hunting it a tad. You know what to do without hunting it <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, it, it's it, my it, problem. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to sit down and die. Okay. All right. You pitch to me then, Creed. How has this satisfied your curious nature? 
probably much longer than I've ever been in the Shadowlands. I've been rummaging around this ancient temple. I spoke to a vampire for a bit. I saw some cool ancient runes with some spirits on. We bashed them down after a little brainstorm. That's just like the British. (laughs) Meet interesting new ghostly cultures and annihilate their relics. Archaeology via dynamite. Only the British. Witness that sweet tempest. I didn't know about that before. Dynamite. (laughs) Didn't really work out very well for anyone involved. But, you know, archaeology in a lot of its history is bad. Um, yeah, all right. When you give me the sum list, you feel a tiny trickle of magical innovation seep into your being, perhaps freed from the destroyed gateway, beacon, amplifier, who knows? You may regain a willpower point. I mean, this is completely irrelevant, but I was just looking in the like rolls, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tens there. There's I mean, a lot of tens. Deep. The universe itself says, "Get them out of the Shadowlands! I don't care. Just fuck off." Do you know what damage they'll cause if they're here too long? No, you know no, you end? really won't. The, the The Shadowlands is such an elastic setting. The damage you would cause is to yourselves. Many, uh, my point still stands, I think. Well, the damage other people would cause is to us. That's yeah, why shall I, we uh, get us some lower ground and see where my door opens up to? Well, uh, now idea. that we know that we so, can leave, do we want to wander around for a bit longer? Nope. No. Uh, no, sir, we do not. Yeah, we are in the underworld, you know. Mm, very well, this, very well. It's just we now have this not, campfire of, of a torch. So. Let's just not look a gift portal in the mouth, sir. So I would well. like to see what happens if we poke the vampire with the bonfire, but it might not be necessary. No? Well, he's not giving us much choice, really, is he? I mean, perhaps we could try finding out what happens if we poke it with the bonfire in the real world. Or would it remain a bon? I, d- I don't know how that works. Quite frankly, sir, what I recommend we do, especially if the oppressor is gone and we can leave, is we head back to London, deliver our report, convince the higher-ups of the guild to buy this hill, turn back up here with a metric absolute shit-ton of dynamite, and blow this entire hill to Kingdom Come. Yes, I, d- I do feel we should uh, forward a, uh, a quick uh, memo report or t- telegram. Uh, Indeed. Informing them because... If all he thinks he needs is a, a vial of blood, uh, or whatever, then uh, he's a vessel. This. I believe a he meant a person. Oh, a vessel! Ah, okay. we do have a bit more time, but still a little bit pressing, I, I think. Uh, who knows how fast that drip will start flowing. We don't know how much ground... Oh, we've got the drip all right. So. Damn it, Carl. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we should definitely send up a, a speedy uh, telegram to London. Indeed, um, I like the cut of your jib here. Uh, but we should probably stay nearby in case they need us to operate quickly on their speedy response. So, for the record, uh, when the portal, uh, when the, the what's it called, when uh, when Woodrow Tango tells you that the portal can open up anywhere, that means uh, anywhere on Earth. And that's Does how I have to also go back to a door. Uh, yes, it does loosely still have to be back to a door or door. Oh, okay, right, that, that's fine. Like, that would cover, like, hard, it? most cave entrances. Well, I, cave I just entrance. wanted to clarify that it's not going to just open a portal in the middle of the sea. Only if it was on a ship at the time. Are these symbolically doors? Because there's a difference between through holes and, you know, blind holes. Symbolically doors. So, like, um, you won't you want get any bullshit where you'll come materialise in the middle of a pipe unless it was potentially being used as, like, a doorway for a community, which I guess in Wad Nosferatu exists, actually. Um, You'd have to do it specifically, basically. Uh, yeah. So... Remember, it's magic. It's all about symbology. It's not about Funny, weird cases. Exactly. If you don't feel it's a door, it's not a door, and therefore it won't work. Mm-hmm. So, it sounded like five of you uh, retreated back down to ground level and were brainstorming plans of action. 
I am mm. in very many multiple minds with the return portal uh, not having a way back and where this could take you. So I'm going to open the floor up a little bit here. Does anyone have any strong pitches on where they would like... The Somme. Somewhere on the Somme. What, what? A, the Somme is fields, and B, why the fuck would we go there? Because it's going to be emotionally resonant for a lot of us, I would have thought. There's going to be doorways somewhere close to it. I don't know, it feels like these are probably going to work uh, on some sort of emotional basis as well. Australia. And we all have. Uh, I was Australia. actually also low-key con- considering Australia. London or my penthouse? No, I don't have a penthouse yet, so... London, I guess, yes. Actually, like- worryingly, actually thinking about it for five seconds... The Somme would probably be a good would be a place not that we would necessarily want to go, but where it would mostly spit us out near there because currently the fifth great maelstrom is raging, right? Fourth. Fourth great. What's the fifth then? Hiroshima. The one after the one well, Hiroshima and the Holocaust. Yeah, and sixth is weaker nightmares, right? Uh yes, though hasn't happened in twentieth anniversary. No. no. Um well, well, yeah, no. it hasn't basically, happened in anniversary has happened in fifth. Basically, um, the most powerful event currently happening in the Shadowlands, the thing that's that's affecting everything around it, is the fallout from the Somme. So, if it ever if there ever was a time to get stuff redirected, we might well yeah. open a door wanting to go somewhere else. But whether or not the door would lead there, or if whether or not the door's passage would get thrown off by the swirling gigantic tornado of death energy. So I'm hearing two votes for the Somme, one vote for Australia, one vote for London, and one not voted so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say yeah, um, Tango's home, but I mean, it, it makes reason to get thrown off. Uh, it's unlikely to come out in inside one of your homes, honestly. Oh, well, no, the reason why I say home is because, like, we want to get out of here, we want to go home, you know, so Tango be in his door. But, like I also said, like, it makes reason, like, that it would be thrown off. Yeah. I might roll a d5. Because I'm unsure. So we've got two votes for the song, one vote for Australia. Okay. One vote for London and one vote for somewhere near Tango's home, which I just kind of assume is also probably in London. Wait, you might live with a guilt. Do you want me to roll to see if it works? Because I can't, I can't fail it. That would also be deeply <laughs> funny. Yeah, go on. Let's see if it works first. You can't spend a willpower to to get a little success, can you? Nope, nope. No. I have a lot of dice at least. Yeah, that never worked out well for Samir. <laughs> You had such rotten luck. Give me your energy. (laughs) To be fair, I think part of the reason that they moved over to um, target numbers in New World of Darkness is that mathematically you are more likely to botch the more dice you have, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there's more chances to fail and get ones. Exactly. (laughs) That looks like it's probably a success. What's What's the target number on that? Uh, Starlight. Oh, Good creation. Numina. Here we go. Oh, uh, oh, wind. One willpower per level of the power up to date. It's, it's Oh, oh I was really wrong. Um. Cool, so that is net three successes. After some... turned. Did he botch? No, he didn't. He got three successes. After some <laughs> deliberation at the base of the tower, with the sound of the legionnaire still screaming as he tries to make his way towards you. <clears throat> Your doormancer walks up to one of the ways into the ghostly tower. And begins raising his hands once more, channeling something deep inside. Messages of distant abysses and stars, ne'er seen by natural-born humanity. 
not under their own light at least. Once more, the cladding of reality begins to flake away. The veil between undeath and life, shedding like clumps of hair, pulling itself out by its own roots, forming a rough, ragged wound, a tear in reality occupying the space of the doorway, but not quite out to the gaps. A ragged, tired hole in existence. Almost as soon as it's through, uh, as it's up, Tango slumps to his knees, exhausted by the effort as this latest trickle of magical energy is robbed from him. The maelstrom outside howls. What are we doing, folks? Stand back, sirs. I'll go first. I'm sure it's safe. Very well. Everyone's through just to make sure it stays up. Yeah, and very making sure. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm right behind uh, Reginald Fox. So in that case, we'll call it one and two of the Somme, three is Australia, four and five are London. Who wants to roll the D5? Ooh, I want to. I think Creed should roll it. It's his, it's his magic. That's true. Yeah. Well, if he's let Ollie do a roll. <laughs> right, rolling a 1D5. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ah, oh, London. <laughs> here we go, here we go. It spits us out in the 41st millennium. This is now a rogue trader game. <laughs> uh, yeah. To be honest, I would love to do something like that, where we have Actually, the setting... Given it's only high 40k. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy that you used that particular term as well. Yeah, you remember how Mal's rogue trader's backstory was that his brother was supposed to get it, and then... A character was spit out of space and time from the future, displaced his brother, and thereby he got it as next in line. Didn't know. No, didn't yeah, know it was Gabby's backstory. It was Gabby was from the future. She fell through the. It was actually oh. Kairos's backstory. Oh, was it K? I thought it was one of them. Basically, a psyche fell through the warp. Yeah. Um, popped out. Yeah, we could do that with five sorcerers. Did did, did Mao's brother? <laughs> Die, or did he just get displaced into the future? Or was it unclear? Um, he was displaced. Well, it was unclear, but oh, Meta, I believe, now had him displaced into the future. Can you imagine me trying uh, to cast my magic in 40k <laughs> if it just opens the door to the fucking warp? Mother <laughs> <laughs> that just steps forward, like, hey, mate. But yeah, I but this is much yeah, worse but- than before. <laughs> yeah, but then Reginald Foxy Smythe picks up a bolter, it's just like. I think I'm going to like this reality. You'd be the only ones who don't speak the language. The age of humanity has arrived, and it has arrived with big guns. <laughs> and then people would be trying to explain simple concepts like warp travel to you, and you'd be going, I don't understand. What is the, th- This just sounds like magic-y bullshit. <laughs> then you'd know how Duanesh feels. Anywho. Oh. One by one, you file out. And one by one you emerge, blinking, onto... No, it can't be. This is... the Strand? By Jove, this is... this is awfully lucky! Wow! You have travelled hundreds of miles away to distant and barbaric central London. I mean, it was pretty barbaric. Can't believe our luck! Indeed! Like I'm just doing we are that. Going to have to... Sorry. God. Oh no! I was just gonna say I'm just doing that thing. Like you know where like tears just start streaming down. You're not crying because you don't <laughs> even realize like was like just tears of joy. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. Well, at least we're we're closer to closer to, uh, to the order. But unfortunately, someone's going to have to explain why we don't have the car. Well, we couldn't have really driven that thing back in its state anyway. That's very true. I reluctantly well, believe you even had your HQ in London. Yeah, we're well. killed. Through the order then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which means it's a slightly anticlimactic. I don't know why I let you put London on the fucking ballot. <laughs> See? Slightly anticlimactic escape. See, I was going to suggest London, but I figured you'd never let us do it because that would be too easy. And it just would like, be too easy. Well, I don't know why I did. It was a fit of intense dumbness overtook me. I guess I was just so lost in the dream of hoping you'd roll Australia. 
We have teleported to Coruscant. This is now an Edge, edge of Empires game. Oddly, a really good system, but like the dice for it, like good luck getting a roller. Coruscant is, is absolutely not where you play a game called Edge of Empire. <laughs> Anywho, I think probably a good time to go into narrative time. So the five of you <laughs> catch a literal cab to the uh, Orders HQ. A rather ostentatious, if well hidden, oh. club, presumably. Was I it? ate my pocket sandwich on the way. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, what happens to the torch? The torch? The bonfire torch. The second you cross over into existence, it goes out, but not neatly. Oh. Instead, there's a, a puff, a fizz, a red copper tasting mist and then just a series of wet thwacks as the torch's flame is immediately extinguished by ectoplasmic goop which oh falls all over it and by extension your singular arm oh lord oh. Hmm. Very I'm going to try and catch some of that and stuff it in my pocket yes, hold still I, I take as much as you need, please <laughs> As much as you need. All, all of it, in fact. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> I, I will say, as you've been to the Shadowlands before, this is not your first experience with Ectoplasm Tango, and you will be well aware that not only does it resist attempts to be analysed scientifically, uh, it also tends to dissipate. All right, I'll just fidget with it, because I can. Fair. <laughs> so the five of you, very anticlimactically, pop on over to the the Order's HQ. Walk me through your plan here. What are you, the five of you, doing? What are you asking to be done? Uh, oh, wait, yeah. up to the door with a sign saying "Mission accomplished." We think no, it's not accomplished. No, uh, we should. We definitely inform them immediately. We do a a brief uh, kind of debrief of like it's the vampire X Y Z is happening. Z. No, call an urgent meeting. Exactly, like, this could be pressing, and then we give a detailed report while the higher-ups are deciding what should be done. Um, personally, uh, I'm gonna go through with that. Now, like, I'm gonna leave this out, like, for a bit of, uh, input, but, uh, I, I want to go and find my handler and blow him the fuck up. Now, when you say blow him the fuck up, yeah, just for clarity... <laughs> Um, use my max level power right in his face. Oh, literally blow him the fuck up. <laughs> I guess you did have a side mission to protect the car and some other things, didn't you? Um, no, um, more specifically, um, uh, I have to make sure that the benefits from this mission are for the Order alone and no one else. That includes any one of us personally. Which technically has been completed because none of us have directly benefited and we are like so directly. How does, how does killing your handler come into this? That's pure vengeance for putting me in this situation. Oh, I see. Yeah, he's, he's pretty right. PTSD. I assume you're going on the lamb immediately thereafter. Oh, most certainly, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, let's. I mean, Kat, give me a max level power cast, please, Carl. What is the. Like, what do you roll for that? Um, it is manipulation awareness. Okay. Uh, um, diff seven to soak. Cool. Uh, what is it? I, under? It doesn't have a direct um, difficulty or target number. It's a uh, pyrokinesis. Oh, in, so it's uh, a hunter's hunted. Fair. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking in the other one. Ah, uh, uh, it's PDF page eighty-one. Okay. Ah, there we go. Uh, what do you say? What's PDF one? Uh, AC one. AC one. Oh, sorry, by like AC two in the light like, selector, but AC one on the actual page number. Fair. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, I'm right. Thing real quick. Okay. Zoom. 
Uh, yeah, it looks like standard diff, so we'll call it diff six between that and the emotions. Uh, um, see, um, can I count? Yes. You'd hope so. You're highly educated. <laughs> that is a botch. Are you particularly attached to our dear heavily wounded Sebastian Thornbury Carl? Uh, no, like I figured this was like the end of the mini camp, so like it is literally it going out. Is. And for you, you are going, going out in, in a, a very literal battle. In a blaze as, of glory. <laughs> as you muster this intense rage, this hatred, not even muster, really, honestly, because it's overcoming you, all consuming within you, this drive to achieve vengeance. You're going to murder your handler, then you're going to run away. You don't know where, you don't know how, you don't know who with, if anyone, but you are pissed. This has been a singularly scarring and honestly triggering experience given, you know, the war. Um, and and you, you've had enough. You've had enough. You've had enough. And at just about the moment that you enter your handler's room, how many dots do you have in this? Uh, four. You explode in a white-hot ball of flame, immolating yourself in an instant, and also oh. your handler and a good chunk of the room. I'm happy that I got him as well. Like that that's like the important bit for me. But like more than anything, I feel that that's like a poetic end to Sebastian Thornberry. I would say so, given your like ongoing freakouts over the last few sessions. For everyone else, you've been debriefing. Sebastian Thornberry got pulled away, uh, you know that happens with him. He's often interviewed separately <clears throat> for the, t I guess, rare times you may have worked together previously. And you've not been going for more than know, maybe 10 minutes of debrief. You've got the, the salient points out when an explosion rocks the building and the fire alarms begin going off. Oh dear. What do, folks? My follow standard procedure. <laughs> I'm assuming yeah. fire drills are a thing. <laughs> exit yeah, orderly, fire drills exit. Orderly form a queue out of the fire exit. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going way. to follow procedure and run towards the source of the explosion to see what it was and if it needs killing. Is that standard procedure? Uh, if that is standard procedure, then that's what we would do. Apparently it's not necessarily. Um, it looks like there's something... Oh, hang about. You're going to burn down all of London. Um, well. <laughs> unclear whether the fire drills are a thing or not. So... Um, we will say it is perfectly reasonable for you all to like politely recuse yourselves. Say, well, we'll pick this up afterwards. That sounds like um, a bomb. Actually, no. What the hell am I talking about? You're you're all uh, former soldiers. I will take a self control roll, please. Difficulty six. That's that's going to be some. Oh, not from Holman Twite, actually, who served in the mechanics and wouldn't have had nearly the same terrifying experiences. Simple fail. Uh, what's this? I still like to think that I was with the tension. Seven. What's six? Uh, sorry, Nicholas? What's the diff? The diff was six. Okay, cool. Success. Cool. So everyone who succeeded, you retain some level of control over yourselves. Uh, those of you who simple failed, um, how do you see your memories of the song being... In it was just, just Reginald, right? Yeah, just me. Reginald who was with the Gloucesters in the song. And who I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit down, pull a hip flask from my waistcoat, and begin to drink. Thousand yards staring as memories begin flashing in front of you as you just shut down, unable to cope with the sudden flood of emotion. It takes maybe an hour or two for things. Hell of a day. Sorted before people realize what's happened and manage to battle the fire enough to bring things under control. It seems that Sebastian Thornbury, a pyromancer in service to the Order, either attempted to 
murder someone and failed, or else simply exploded from perhaps a combination of trauma and stress. The latter is generally thought to be the more likely scenario. Little did they know it was all of the above. (laughs) (laughs) His explosion was unusually dramatic as he botched it with his max level, thoroughly emotionally fueled trauma fest and uh, took out essentially an entire wing between the initial explosion and the resulting fire, including numerous archives and records of the order. My books. Yeah. I'm grinning ear to ear. Like, this is probably the best end to a character I've ever had. It's your willpower, (laughs) Sebastian. Um... Like, that's it. I was considering pumping some into it, uh, but it's five. Or, like, five max. Uh, It's currently four if you count the cast or botched cast. Do you feel you have any unfinished business? Oh, plenty, yes. (laughs) Like, I'm gonna haunt the fuck out of this place. How much... How bitter would you say you were at the end? Was there anything good in your life? Um... Not really, no. Like it, it was pretty much just all order of the hat business as they kept me busy so I couldn't capitalize on like uh, the long uh, membership of my family, like so I couldn't really gain any influence. Somewhere some days, perhaps a week or two after the explosion, on the other side of the shroud, a big bag of spiritual plasm tears open. A ghostly wound ripped asunder as the shade of Sebastian Thornbury claws his way out, overtaken by anger and hate and the unceasing misery of his life and virtual indentured servitude to the Order. He crosses the shroud as a Morphrite, instantly becoming a spectre enthralled to the evil half of his ghostly self in contact with the greater spectral evil hive mind intent on doing as much harm, destruction and death to the world and more specifically the order of the hat as possible before he is dragged down to the claws of oblivion and destroyed for a second and final time for everyone else what is your plan of action? What were you going to ask the Order of the Hat to do? And uh, like, pitch to me any specific details or interpretations on what happened. Um, that there's a an actual vampire there. We can you can assume. You, I, I think you said you've given the like the general lay of events, but I just want to clarify if there's anything that you think you want to phrase something in a specific way, or any details you wish to like deliberately make sure. That you're I'll emphasis that there's role. both werewolves and some large cats. But oddly enough, the large cat seems to be reasoned with at least when it's in tandem with an even smaller cat. <laughs> Fair. Anything else? I mentioned you know, the town was running low on supplies. Most of them appeared to be infected. Um, the, the vampire mentioned about the extra, extra strong, extra large burst of dream stuff. And now that it knows that it's not part of, uh, it's not Roman, it may send out different dreams. Aren't Roman in nature? Um, okay. Anything else? It wasn't very cooperative, and it doesn't like flashlights. <laughs> Your interrogator is a little bit unsure on what you're talking about with this, like, from the underworld nonsense. Like, if you had a flashlight on the thing, why didn't you destroy it or capture it? What? Physically there, sir. <sighs> Insofar, sir... As capture or destruction goes, it was inside a stone sarcophagus. It seemed to be sealed there, unable to escape. Thus, we di- I did not take unilateral action to attempt to destroy or disable the creature, as I did not want it to get free of those bindings. Uh, it is also notes the creature mentions it was about one vessel off. 
and the amount of blood needed for its resurrection ritual. That's something to that effect. The debrief winds on for a little while before eventually concluding. An hour or two passes with the four of you left to stew in your own memories of the experience and the recent shocking death of Sebastian Thornbury off screen. Love it! <laughs> Before. Well, this uh, is. Oh, sorry. Oh no, I was just going to comment that this is the second character I've got killed right at the end in the epilogue. <laughs> yeah, and the other one was a hundo as well. So you got a hundo yeah. and then a botch. You need to stop <laughs> making rolls in the last session of any campaign. <laughs> Did Jomo die in the previous? Oh, yeah. Jomo uh, initially got a government job and like a life of wealth and privilege. And then Creed talked him into, or Creed Zanzarim talked him into one final job, you know, one last, one last speedy heist on the way back to elsewhere. Uh, and he botched it. And as a result, was caught trying to steal the Imperial jewels from the Imperial city and was promptly hung, along with uh, Snowpaw, who just happened to be his assistant at the time. Who the hell is Snowpaw? Snowpaw was the Khajiit who Ulfric had translating, who told him oh, that right. uh, Dowinbar's name was Dowinbar. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so. Eventually, a more senior member of the Order comes in. They doff their hat to you in the ancient display of respect. Gentlemen, our hats back. we find your mission to have been of mixed results. In addition to damaging valuable agents and property to the point of the destruction of both, we have not actually obtained the vampire in question. Additionally, the Order is uncertain as to whether they can conceivably acquire them any time soon, especially with the involvement of members from Tutley, uh, members of the British military from Tutley Barracks. Your notes about further dreams do seem concerning. And so we will withdraw operatives from perhaps 50 to 60 miles around. What happens to the locals after that isn't any of our business, save as an object of study. <clears throat> the uh, loss of the car and any order inventory with it will be deducted from the remaining estate of the Thornbreeze. Motherfuckers! <laughs> I still have living family, you can't. So you won't get away with this! <laughs> Why are you Australian all of a sudden? Uh, I don't know, it was just the dream of Australia coming back through. God damn it. <clears throat> Nevertheless, all of you may consider yourselves to be somewhat on suspension until such time as we have need of you again. You have leave to go, but may not make use of. Order facilities for the next. Can I have a stop in the hospital? <laughs> you can use a private hospital like anyone else. All right. And uh, with that, you're ushered out of the orders HQ. I live there. I work there. But I'm not a member of the order. I just work for them. Uh, you are also on suspension from, I guess, your job. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Uh, completely understandable. Uh, I feel that uh, Puppet Duck uh, quite happy with it, actually. Um, yes, because, it has. Uh, not not going to voice this, um, but... Uh, my my head cannon right now is that that torch, uh, all that rage has now just burnt up, and he can't use his curse anymore. So he has to go off, and he has to learn the uh, was it the enchanting stuff that he had in the last campaign. That fits really well, actually. That's such a nice ah. resolution. I hadn't considered that at all. Yeah, but he literally can't use his curse powers anymore. He he, all his rage burnt up in that in that flame. 
burnt up and then came down on his other arm. <laughs> There's a poem in there somewhere, somehow. Not a good one, though. Yeah, that's that's my head headcanon. In the aftermath for this event, as we can see, Sebastian Thornbury, dead, and his debt is, as ever, transferred to the next generation of his family, as well as the mission costs, which are also transferred to his family, further indebting the ancient lineage. Timothy Popejack, yeah, finds his his curse just... His abilities don't seem to work in the same fashion. He's unable to draw on that same sense of rage. He doesn't necessarily have peace, just numbness. Using his own emotions for fuel seems to have been rather more permanent than he'd been hoping. And as a result, he dedicates himself to a different magical craft, which I believe was alchemical scrimshaw? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Does anyone else have any other like activities they want to be getting up or up to in the post game? Or how, what do you see yourself doing on suspension and indeed after suspension? Or just going everyone. to work as a gamekeeper somewhere. I see myself trying to learn how they create enchanted cars and becoming the future creator of enchanted cars that do cool shit. Yep, I can see it. So uh, you know, Holman Twite there rides out his suspension with some level of grace, and then goes mm. right back to working for them. Yeah, I ride out my uh. suspension, and I go on riding out on suspension. It's full circle. He I'm knows... Gonna... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, oh. you can finish. I was going to say, so he knows that the Order headhunted him to begin with, and, and really they need his skills more than he needs theirs. So, for him, after just a couple of weeks, and him putting out ads in the paper offering his services in a couple of institutions. His suspension is quietly dropped and he's actually brought back in very rapidly. In spite of his bolshy attitude, the order is fundamentally in need of his services. Damn straight. Uh, What was Tango going off to do? Uh, Let's get the country to Australia. So I originally got my powers offering my firstborn son to a spirit (laughs) <laughs> some description. Let's uh, see if I can hide, have and hide him in uh, Australia somewhere. There you go. Uh, that's that's Tango's thing. He's going to spend the next few years or decades even have a secret around. firstborn son in Australia. Secret firstborn son in Australia. What was your son in Chile called? Is it the same guy or did the firstborn get? Well, oh, Australia and Chile are the same place, right? <laughs> My mind. <laughs> This campaign. <laughs> that worked out oh, I see. Because you were doing an Australian accent the whole right. Yep. Oh I'm yeah. You. I'm following you. Cool. Okay. That's amazing. Everyone's fucking stories yeah, that, works out. That links quite nicely. <laughs> so, so Woodrow Tango, having confused Australia and Chile, <laughs> emigrates to Chile, never quite processing that it's not actually Australia somehow. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't it's know. the fake Australian accent for his son for his whole life. God damn it. And uh, <laughs> never officially leaves the order. And then presumably either it actually does work and he is able to hide his son in the most magic rich valley he's able to find in all of Chile. There's so much activity here. So many for lack of a better term, side quests, one might even call them. They could. Yet, who should turn up but a high-ranking member of the Order of the Hat? And also Popa Jack was there. <laughs> Popa Jack, who Popa by Jack this... Was semi-high at that point. ...distant point has long gone senile enough to not ever really twig that he, in fact, knew Thornbury's dad. <laughs> yeah. Either that or just really was Pope jacking it up and didn't pay enough attention to put two and two together. <laughs> There's a lot of these lesson ability around, you know. So yeah, there you go. That's that's what happens with Woodrow, Woodrow Tango. Either he's successful in hiding his son amidst that magical backdrop, or he's not successful in hiding his son and presumably actually sacrifices himself in his son's stead, which would be very noble. Or it explains why Tango in the end ended up in the abyss being eternally tortured. <laughs> Didn't you just get... That was an angry vampire, wasn't it? It was an angry yeah. vampire, but, you know, you could say fate arranged it. Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Um, 
Cool. So that's Woodrow Tango sorted, Sebastian Thornbury sorted, uh, Holborn Twite sorted, Timothy Pokerjack sorted, and Reginald Foxley Smythe, who did you... So you wanted to go off and become a gameskeeper? You wanted to tender your resignation at this in outrage? No, I was having a sabbatical because they put me on suspension. So I was just going to go off and do a job. Okay. I, I have to work for a living. So uh, you go off and spend a few months being a gameskeeper. Gives you time to evaluate your life your role in existence and what the Order of the Hat is like as a place for someone who thinks that things should really be right and proper first and foremost. After suspension, you're informed that you'll be welcomed back at only a mildly reduced rate. How does Reginald Foxley Smythe respond? He goes back to work. He's got to work for a living. And a reduced rate is still a good rate. Stiff upper lip and carry on. Well, they need, do need people to do uh, to take their safari trips. Reginald knows that it's better with the order than without, or at least in his opinion. And it does give him a certain outlet. As we've all seen, he's not a man who shies away from violence, and though being a gameskeeper might keep him for a time, in the end he needs that thrill of the hunt, the chase. And I get to work with him again. He's going to love that so much. He's presumably horrified to find out that... (laughs) They let Holborn back in? They let Holborn back in. And he seems to be slightly more important than before. And apparently he didn't have to do the whole suspension either. Eyebrow twitching. Jack also comes back eventually. (laughs) It's a little thing. I think at that, can I roll... Something. What would you like to roll? The the ultimate indignity that the bullshit little communist didn't have to do a suspension. Uh, What would you like to roll? So I would like to roll uh, something to do, because obviously like as I've I've had the whole time is, uh, Reginald is uh, or works for the vampire as a hunter, uh, works as a for the vampire, order, as a yeah. hunter of very... Well, he's got vampire hunter, but he's also like a, a big game hunter in Africa, so he takes... Yeah. Uh, the higher ups out whenever they want to go on safari for a shooting trip. Um, can he? Can I try and find out who it was made the choice to make each, uh, Hol- make sure Holborn um, didn't uh, have to do a suspension that I did? You want to arrange some hunting accidents? Yeah, just a few. Okay, I will take. I think that's going to be manipulation firearm. Shall we say I'm going to call it difficulty eight? I'm going to spend my last willpower. <laughs> Cheap. <laughs> Let it rise. Yeah, I had full willpower and didn't spend any. <laughs> unearned. Unearned four successes. You had a difficult Five. Five. I'm doing hunting in, big game hunting in Africa and my skill in firearms is large caliber guns. Bracket elephant guns. Unearned five successes. You didn't need the willpower. You had four. Well, six with like if I've nerd. got uh, I've got six if I've got if I spend a willpower. Oh, I said difficulty eight, didn't I? Oh, difficulty eight. Sorry, I thought you said difficulty seven. Yeah, no. So yeah. I made that speed at five successes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like it, it, it takes. You notice a curious trend, Holborn, as, as a lot of your friends in upper management, well, friends is, is not necessarily the right term for it, but the people who valued your skill set, over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years or so, they start to thin out. This hunting trip or that, the only commonality uh, is that they always seem to die when Reginald's in the party, but in a way that's always very clearly not Reginald's fault. Some of them they're mauled by a lion, some of them they... Uh, they're attacked by locals on an expedition. Oh, well, expedition there, not necessarily meaning safari expedition, meaning, like, what you were doing as well. <clears throat> or mauled by some terrifying night creature. Always things that very clearly aren't Reginald. But a little voice at the back of your mind gnaws at you, so telling you that just because it's not Reginald doesn't mean it's not Reginald putting them in that position. Um, can I do an investigation check? Confirm my fears? I mean, I'm presumably providing some of the cars that go along on these expeditions, so maybe I can uh, figure out some things from what's left in them. You can do 
intelligence investigation. I'm also going to give you diff eight, and you need to beat Benji's successes to catch him. He got five. Um, I was going to say, while this is going on, like, I'd like to amend my uh, epilogue slightly. Like, yeah. I presume that, like, haunting the hat, I eventually discover this because he was in, like, my last mission. And discovering that he's doing the things that I want to do. I want to, like, protect Reginald whenever he's in the order building. <laughs> yeah, Reginald, you, you're you not really sure why, but honestly, things always seem to go your way. It's like you have a guardian angel watching over your plan to strategically murder members of leadership. If anything, things occasionally get out of hand. People you didn't want to die uh, become collateral damage. Holborn twice on your one success there. You have your inklings. You've got some circumstantial evidence, but nothing you could ever really bring against Reginald. And Basically, also, I'm never going on a trip with this guy to the safari. Oh, yeah. You've got it. Like, your gut told you that. Any paltry evidence you gather only confirms it again and again. As for Tutley without Wald, the area is quarantined by the government. Several days later, the entire incident is hushed up as a an outbreak of the Spanish flu, which more than a few crack papers call out as how could it appear so suddenly and with such a ridiculous casualty rate, fatality even, the vast majority of the locals seem to have expired, and those who lived became weak, wan things who refused to talk about their experiences. Strange dreams continued to plague the area for weeks, months, even years after the fact. The Order on several occasions tries to make moves on buying White Mountain stealthily, but the government buys up a lot of land in the area. And the Tutley Barracks is refounded and expanded. They're not able to get anywhere near. In the end, the incident becomes one more curious note in the Order's histories. Surrounded by blood and ruination and the loss of several skilled operatives. But what is an Order of the Hat expedition, if not one long march to the phrase, the loss of several skilled operatives? A tradition that will hopefully carry well on into the 70s at the very least. Mm. The book closes on this, with a beast buried under the mountain, and the order able to do naught about it. And unless anyone has any final amendments or requests, it feels like a good spot to leave the campaign. Yeah. A note of yeah. uncertainty. With no firm resolution. I like it. The Order were not acting like gentlemen. So I pruned those who called themselves gentlemen. <laughs> so. Does anyone have any reminders for hypothetically next campaign? Uh, never get in, never go on safari with, uh, with Benji. That's a big one. Vampires are not gentlemen. Well, I mean, like, just because you're a vampire doesn't mean you're a gentleman. Piper Jack's experience. Sorry. In Piper Jack's, in, in Jack's experience, vampires are not gentlemen. Fair, fair. Yeah. Anything else? The Thornberries will remember this. <laughs> fair, fair. Anything else? No? Cool. In that case, feedback. Anything you liked? Uh, anything you liked? Anything you disliked? Anything you might see more of or less of next campaign? Uh, no, I like that. This rent. Uh, rent oh, went. magically bullshittery. I like magic a lot. But okay, I know that's very much dependent on the type of World of Darkness system we're playing. Yeah. It wasn't. Quite like I think it, I feel like it had more magic than sorcerers, but less magic than the average VTM game. Thing is, as well, you got to remember how many of us actually had magic. I think it was what just the three of us, just the three people. Yeah, I used one once. It was more like you were farting around with magic bullshit. Oh, was that the only time you used it as well? Yeah, oh, sorry, twice. His, oh, twice. Yeah, yours was once in the first session. Yours was so blatantly like 
powerfully offensive that it's kind of hard to not that's often a risk with things like that though and mm. i think carl knew that going in i like i yeah. wasn't really giving you situations to use it but it, i didn't think you well, were fussed about that it happens a whole bunch of times you, a lot of people you see with vtm goes i want the really cool discipline powers i'm gonna spend loads of xp on getting them it's like yeah but you can't use them without being really obvious yeah Oh uh, yeah, I mean, like most of it was like flavor for me. Yeah, I, I think you definitely like it came up. It just wasn't actively used. No. I, I was really happy with how Pyromancy turned out for your character, honestly. Um, like, because I mean, I could have used it in so many more instances, but yeah. it's, like better not do it. It's more like uh, as well. I, I say it manifests flavor-wise again in like character, like mm-hmm. uh, with lots of rage and stuff like that. You know, like fiery passions and such. Like yeah. very typical. I, think, um, I, I would even broaden it out a bit. I was really happy with how everyone role played their various magical powers. Um, this this campaign, the, there was a lot of like respect and wariness for the entering the Shadowlands power, which is portrayed as if you fuck it up, you will die a horrible death if you're lucky, and there are definitely worse fates you can succumb to. Um, and it was treated with due gravitas by someone who was otherwise quite light and flippant, so it made for a really nice contrast. I really liked, as as you say, Carl, how yours mostly affected your your role play, but it was also brought up in like tactical planning every now and then. Um, and I really liked that young Nicholas was kind of like low key, constantly trying to use his curses. You know, the the general young Nicholas thing with magical powers, but he wasn't really half wisdoming it. It was like actually looking at situations, going, "Oh, how could my curse fit here? Where might it be useful?" And then like sometimes using it, sometimes not, sometimes trying to. Uh, which I, I would actually say, I think that was personally for me. I hope this doesn't sound like a neg. It's not intended to be, but like the high point of young Nicholas trial by experimentation with magical powers in, in any campaign. Uh, yeah. it's. Uh, yeah. I did also, I really like Benji's commitment to uh, being the butler to a T. I thought that went really well overall. and was a really neat character beat. Um, also, helped him a cri- I took a crippling floor to make it happen I had to play it yeah no it's beautiful I think it's and it's easy enough to take a crippling floor and then just kind of leave it by the wayside I think people often do that with derangements um and you definitely didn't and that was that was super awesome uh, my eye begins to twitch then I'd, I yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it says about you that like a solid two thirds of all your pen and paper characters play someone who's constantly twitching in apoplectic, barely constrained rage. Um, Benji role playing himself. I feel like that's just Benji. He's always got some sort of rage building slowly, surely. If you've ever had your eye twitch in rage, you know that that's like a genuine thing as well. Yeah. Uh, and then from from Ollie as well, I I liked his the the story of Ollie's communist revolutionary journey, starting out with oh I'm going to read some communist stuff in the first session or two, to slowly going through to like basic bitch tier communist arguments, through to eventually ah I see so we supplant the ruling class with another ruling class, but we say they're better because we're going to like do the Stalinist thing before the Stalinists um, it was uh, I guess not the world's like peak communist play but it was entertaining to watch the evolution there <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it cool so yeah those, I guess those are the things that I, I really like from everyone's characters or some of the things I really like from everyone's characters um, any other campaign feedback I mean, he kept tone very well. Like, pace was a bit up and down, but generally, like, it was paced quite well. But, I mean, like, it's a little difficult with us being players, like, and mixing role play with progression at the same time. I still think we uh, got a pretty good balance. Uh, I'm glad. Thank you. Uh, how did the, like, restricting willpower mechanics work? Because I wanted to make... I wanted to make it, like, usable, but also a much more carefully husbandable resource. Um um, I personally felt it uh, made it much more valuable, but at the same time, I say due to the way I was playing my character, like, apart from having to spend a willpower to cast to the end, I was on max. Mm. I mean, I liked wasn't it. just willy-nilly dumping it. Yeah, I really liked it because you didn't, because I, I was guilty of this as well, where you said that initial thing of, oh, I just used willpower and everything. Oh, God. Now we have no willpower. <laughs> oh, no. There are crucial roles coming up. <laughs> Oh no! 
I think I was mostly fine with the willpower thing. I just chose the wrong one for my character. I, um, that happens to people every campaign. I think I, yeah, that's, I that's not on you at all. It's I, like a casual reminder that you can always ask to change your nature, but it's also really easy to forget that. Um, so it was something I kept meaning to do like four or five sessions back, but happens to the best of us, man. Yep. And now, I'm, I don't know about the system because Hyperjack's quite a willful character anyway. Um, and I tend to use the willpower a fair bit. Uh, I did end on like, I think two willpower left. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 enjoy yeah, but you're using it to fuel magic and important things like that. It's where, yeah, <laughs> willpower as a reroll resource was far more carefully husbanded by everybody, I think, because suddenly it was that thing of, oh no. Oh god, no, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, it's not something that I'm gonna be doing like every World of Darkness campaign now, it'll be, haha, no more willpower on wake up. That was a once only if, uh, or rarely if ever again situation. Um, but I. So does, I, does anyone have any narrative questions as well about the setting? Oh, yes, and that's, that's the next one. Questions, anything, uh, what's it? God damn it, I've forgotten my spiel. What's the fucking phrasing? Questions, anything anyone was narratively unsure of, uh, unsure of, was everyone following the plot? And I realize we have a number of dangling plot threads by the end due to the, the teleporty resolution. So the, the Roman Welsh thing, like his name not being Roman. Yes, he was uh, Celt. He's not, yeah, he's not Roman. Does anyone else have a guess on this? As I think the answer came up this session. Well, oh, didn't like Romans, like I'm just guessing here, like based upon what was uh, presented, but like the Romans came over, found out it was like, well, really powerful vampire but like in perception like a blood god of some court and they started worshipping him in some way close but not no quite yeah so ah. the issue he had is he he was a uh, a blood god ruling over his tribe in some way shape or form then your boy Mithras Noted Fucking Mithra. shit poster de jour of of no, noted Britain. zero taker of zero shits from other people claiming yeah. to be gods when he's around. Almost turned Samir limb from limb. Came over. No, we never met Mit. We never met Mithras. You met you met Mithras. You met Mithras's child. Yeah, who did te- threaten to tear you limb from limb? Yeah. So Mithras is for everyone else is a Persian esque vampire guy whose shtick is he moves to Britain in the year 70 with the express reason of I enjoy the ass kicking and there's a lot of fighting. Um, and this guy was one of the victims. Also, of his- for- he's got a cult of Roman soldiers. Yes. He's got a cult, he's got yeah, a cult amongst Roman soldiers. And there are f- four legions were stationed in Britain. That's insane yeah. for when you really think about it. Like, four. Um... It was a very revolt-ridden, but also quite valuable yeah. province. Um, cool. So he uh, was a victim of one of Mithras's campaigns, uh, and he, was, uh, his tribe was defeated by the Romans, uh, and rather than be killed, he was captured, rendered torpid, and imprisoned under the, the mountain, and then had a big shrine erected to his defeat and shittiness over the top of him which over time became like a symbolic shrine for his people, and then they were eventually wiped out. Uh, however, when he went to sleep, or was forced to sleep, as far as he was aware, Roman domination over Britain was basically inevitable and there was nothing that could be done about it. So when he woke up, to an extent, that was still what he thought was happening. So the dreams he was pushing out were intended for a Roman audience. I mean, overall, I'd say, even though there are quite a few dangling threads, and there are like, a lot of places on the map, I feel like it tied together quite nicely. Um, like, yeah, good story overall. I enjoyed it. I oh, should yeah. clarify again as well, when it's uh, with, with the whole sunk into Torpor thing, it was specifically that he tried to meld into the earth to run and hide, and the Romans were all like, <laughs> that shit ain't gonna work on us. So, they basically salted the ground and left him trapped, unable to rise. I I didn't particularly run with that one, I'm afraid. I, that's um, fine. I, that's, that's how I originally wrote it, but yeah. obviously... It's... No, I mean, your original spec was great, but I, I'm afraid I, I kind of you and it a little bit, and, like, scanned over it and went, I like lots of bits of this, I will run the thing! And then missed a number of the subtleties. That's 
not a judgment on you. That's me sucking now. Um, yes. Cool. Any other narrative questions? Um, with a note on the map, what would we have found at the other locations that we didn't go to, like St. Anselm's Well and Sprite? So we had St. Anselm's Well, Spriteling in the Sprite Water, um, and, uh, Embry, and Caplock Point, as well as, I guess, Tutley Barracks. So Tutley Barracks, you can kind of guess with the le- way the Legionnaires were looking. Uh, Catplot Point is a standing stone slash dimensional portal thing, which you wouldn't have seen the dimensional portal. I just wanted to do a Catplot cameo, and we worked it in otherwise. Um, I didn't actually have any specific content plan for St. Ansem's Well, Sprite Water, Spriteling, and Embry. They were kind of on there as, like, um, narrative throw-you-a-bone cards. If you'd been going, like, oh, okay, we need to, like, find some other thing or this MacGuffin or that resource or this line of inquiry, then I would have tossed in like clues pointing you towards Embry or Spriteling or um, potentially St. Ansem as well. So they were there to act as like points of agency more than anything else, which I realize is unusual for me. I do usually do at least a couple of notes on like this location or that location has this, that or the other. Um, I just didn't for this one. God damn it. Who has drawn the bollocks underneath Catclot Point? <laughs> <laughs> Any other that narrative quite... questions? Do the, uh, 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 that words. Do the other locations noted on the map, do they have significance? I presume they did because they were named. Would, that, would have things happened? That them? was Carl's question just then. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. So Spriteling and Embry were both small villages. Um, even smaller than Tutley without walls, and St. Ansem's Well was more of just a well. And Catclock Point was just Catclock Point. Catclock Point was a transdimensional portal situation, um, but you wouldn't have seen that. It was an excuse for a Catclock cameo. So uh, that, that was legitimately actually Catclock and Sons of Rhythm. Yeah, but we're not doing like a greater expanded universe. Canon. No, 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 no. If nothing no, no. else, it doesn't actually fit into Catclop and Zanzarim's timeline uh, at all. Um, but just, just, just the formality of there could have been laser beams. <laughs> there could have been laser beams. I guess I didn't want to like it's. We already gave like forty five minutes over to what I was hoping to be a like small joke because I, I paced it really badly. I didn't want to add in now you have to deal with laser beams. No, no, yeah. I just I, I like the, the the concept that it was them, it wasn't just like a, a reference, it was actually them. I love that. Fair. Um and I guess the the big narrative point that I think we didn't really get any conclusion on is what was happening with the werewolves. So there were oh, sorry? What was happening with the werewolves? I hear you saying you wanted to ask. I was going to go into it anyway. There were three originally. They were also affected by the thing that was keeping them in the area, and they were thus basically trapped in southern Lockwood. Uh, The lack of sleep was also getting to them. And they had... They were sort of slowly losing their rage and their sanity. Was one of them Wonder Dog from the pub? was indeed one of the werewolves. So you had the one that you killed, who was a like a runt slash whelp. Uh, How did we kill that one? You killed it with guns, but it was extremely weak at the time. And it was weak it was weakened because it had low is it gnosis in um oh, all of the first? It's not it's, harmony, it's, is it? So it did have low gnosis, but it also had extremely yeah. like, it had basically almost no rage by that point, so it was, yeah. it was screwed. It had no power, basically. Yeah. So it could die to u- usual gunfire. It's, for the record, really easy for werewolves to get rage, generally. Like, the issue they have isn't that they can't get rage, mostly. It's, it's that they that get they too have, much yes, of it. They get too much rage really easily. Um, and these werewolves were having the inverse problem where they didn't have access to rage and that was screwing them. Um, yeah, so you killed the rump with the elephant gun and a number of other. I think you, like, spine shot it, headshot it, and something else within... Pope Jack, is, there were multiple elephant gun rounds went into it, and then Pope Jack finished it off with the headshot with the pistol. Yeah, exactly. So so you really did a number on it, and then it died, basically, because it just didn't have the, like, werewolf bullshit left over to be able to tank the shots, even so. <clears throat> um, 
and then they pursued you out of the forest. The thing that they did have a totem... I know I say I was doing lupines rather than Garou, but they did have a totem spirit, and their totem spirit was Badger, which I think was the weird hissing that you occasionally heard in that chase sequence. Um, so Badger was what deflected uh, Pope Jack's curse, yeah. And ah. indeed blunted the force of Sebastian Thornbury's pyromancy as well. <clears throat> They didn't want to follow you over the bridge, not because they couldn't cross water, but because outside of the woods and nature, Badger had absolutely no protection over them, and it was already pretty weak protection, um, as their link to their spirit was weakened due to the surrounding strange vampiric curse. After the death of that one packmate, and then you two go, uh, uh, you lot going into town, the two eventually wandered into town themselves. One of them was more or less driven completely mad by the dreams and started trying to quench their thirst with an actual instinctive reaction they did have, which is eating humans, which generally werewolves don't do. Because it's really bad for them. Yes. Well, at least it's bad in Werewolf the Apocalypse. Um, again, Lupine, so it's a bit more questionable, but... <laughs> I thought it was a, a ban. They're not supposed to do it. It's as... I know Pentex is the reason that it's really super bad medically, but I think it's a sp- it's a spirit ban. They can't do it. It's part of. The, I mean, for the Garou, it's part of the litany. Is you're not yeah. supposed to eat humans, um, though some of the tribes do. That said, lupines. So I don't necessarily go in for that super much, but still. Um, so yeah, you have one of them eating humans, and then the other one was like trying to figure out a way to not die and not go insane, and ideally not have its packmate die. I kept waiting for an opportunity to bring Wonder Dog back in as the slightly less overtly hostile werewolf, um, but didn't really have a good junction. Uh, You did break the curse in time, so regretfully, the animal occasionally known as Wonder Dog will have survived. (gasps) And probably dragged its maddened packmate back into the forest in time, too. But yeah, that's that's what was going on there. The, the two werewolves wandering around town. One got insane. The other one trying to save its insane friend, whilst also going insane itself. Uh, but this is purely tongue in cheek. But if yeah. they were dogs turning into wares, would they be wolf wares instead of werewolves? I'm so mad at you. Um, Thing. I think they do have, uh, I mean, for the Garu, they have a gift for some of them that will let you look like a dog rather than a wolf when you transform. Um, because I, it's not that common. Um, I didn't really want to, as I say, Lupine's not Garu, so I just <laughs> ran with, I want them to be able to look like a big dog. Or at least I want this one to be able to look like a big dog. Uh, and then other than that, I guess, like, the government has a concealed vampire now. Question mark. I guess they don't know it. They have a concealed weird mystical site that has a vampire under it, maybe. But it also doesn't have its main source of... Oh, yeah, what was happening with the the resonator thing as well? Um, The the ghost of the shrine that you destroyed the last little bit of. Which was not how I expected that to go. I, I was thinking that you were going to like try and build a mock parachute and then get someone down and then escape somehow that way. I didn't picture you, like, destroying the thing and then going via a regular gateway. <laughs> uh, yes. Thing. I think that's all of the dangling threads? That's I, that's the most unresolved campaign we've had in a while. I'm, I'm sorry to, like, give you all the failure state, and I was trying to think, is there any way to really regard this as a win? Not with the criteria they were given. Not for anyone apart from maybe Sebastian Thornbury. And the first thing he did upon arriving at HQ was blow up. Um, yeah. I, 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 that was a win state, though. Sorry? Uh, maybe to Sebastian, that was a win state, though. I, I guess. Uh, I, I consider it, consider it a, a fairly good success. Pope Jack didn't die, and we all got back fine. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a success for the mission you were given, basically, where you were supposed to... Oh, no, to- but that, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Sometimes not losing is good enough. Exactly. It's not the view of the order of the hat, but good enough for the lot of y'all. Cool. Any other questions? 
No? Fair. In that case, any final exploit? Thanks. Oi! Uh, plot progression. <laughs> Does anyone feel like you may need significant plot progression this session? No, not really. I mean, yeah, arguably yeah. not right, actually, because you did finish the campaign, but... Actually, I would say... Plot threads. We learn a lot more about the vampire, you know? Um, I would say we learn a lot more about the... Broker curse. Yeah, and the vampire's abode and where it came from, what the hill was all about. Turns out White Mountain, another mountain, just a giant, you know, monument to dickishness, really. Welcome to Mithras. I love Mithras. It's one of my favourite fictional Londoners. Yeah, I was going to say he's the he's the big UK like. Is he a Methuselah? Or is he like the, was he an? Anti- he is a Methuselah. He's uh, three thousand years old. So he's two thousand years old when he gets to Britain. And uh, no, when is he embraced? Mithras is an indeterminate amount of age, but he's old in quotation marks by the time he gets to Britain. He's he's already a fourth generation by the time he turns up. No one's quite sure how old he is. Or if he's an original fourth gen, or if he ate his way into it. It's heavily implied that, at least through retcons, that he ate his way into it. Uh, he's embraced in 1258 BC. Yeah, uh, BC. He's, he's old by the time he gets to Britain. I think he's just over a thousand. Um, he's well over a thousand. He's over thirteen hundred by that point. Okay. Oh yeah, because he comes with the he comes with the later on with the Roman cult. Yeah, so he's old by that point, and he's truly ancient by modern day. Yeah, he's one of the older ones. Older ones that's at least he's, still like active and does shit. Yeah, he's not like Carl's character level old, but basically nobody is. Yeah, but Sleepy Boy sleeps, so it doesn't count. Yeah, I mean, you, you played a Methuselah, but your Methuselah had basically napped through literally all of recorded history and therefore had done nothing with his life. Whereas Mithras has done a lot of nonsense and bullshit, uh, and it's kind of great. I like Mithras. Um, character development. Any? Does anyone feel they developed their character this session? If so, how? Uh, Pope Jack um, uh, was forced to learn a new magic. That worked out so well. Yeah. And, and uh, as part of that, it's sort of separate, I guess. Uh, he, he lost a fair bit of the rage for the doctors that fucked up his arm. Actually, puts a lot of his future actions into context as well, where he just doesn't really get pissed off at a lot of things. Not because um, he's not an angry person, he is but because he's magically burnt away a portion of his ability to feel anger. Yep. And is therefore the definition of damaged. <laughs> On the note of anger, uh, Sebastian gave in to his burning rage, and uh, I uh, say thematically at least, like, that's what caused like the watching scenario. That was such a bad I- watch. I personally think that the last session Carl Botch is probably one of my favourite parts of any campaign. Like, and it just worked out so well for the story of it. It like, really did. I don't think I would have been uh, as happy with it if it didn't turn out the way, like having gone through it now. Yeah. Any other character development? Um, I say it's not really for me to say, but like, uh, I feel like there was some development on Reginald where, like, you know, it, it was like throughout the campaign, just chipping away at, like, yes, yes, the gentleman, like, supreme, must serve the gentleman. Okay, fuck these cons, they aren't worth it, I'll find a real gentleman to serve. Well, Gotta put these ones... You might notice, Carl, how there was one character still acting like a gentleman throughout the entirety of the end game, and that was the character who blew up and died. And like <laughs> hell. <laughs> what? He General also. Boxes. Sorry, he ran away and left you to die and plotted uh, murder. Uh, he was not acting like a gentleman either. He also repeatedly ran away at the first sign of danger. To the point that he's on multiple occasions got character development points for not running away quite as quickly as he did the last time. Well, Reginald has f- rosy glasses when he thinks of. Uh... Ah, heart symbol. 
fair, fair. Yeah, anything else? Cool, cool. Uh, excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well this session? <sighs> See, as much as I hated the scene, like, I think everyone's stuck true with their... How do I put this? Um, no self-preservation instinct curiosity scientist aspect conversation with the vampire. I've got no way to put that concisely. Um, I, I think I got the gist of it. I love that scene. Uh, the confused vampire, and you just like casually dropped on him the bomb that aeroplanes exist, and <laughs> it took the like, yeah, no, we'll we'll be able to speak. We don't use horses. We pass lightning through a like a little you know a cord, and and that sends messages to people. And by that point, he went, nah, this is bullshit, fam. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for him to like eventually actually wake up and go. Wait, what the fuck? And, and then you like try to explain to him, or Popa Jack tried very obfuscatingly to explain to him how these things worked using a bunch of terms with mostly Greek etymology. I think some of it with yeah, a lot of it with Greek etymology or like bits of Latin, which means that the terms would be even more confusing to him because he'd get, like, elements of what you're saying, but not in the way they mean in the modern sense, just what they meant for him in the classical period. And, and oh, sorry. It's just, it's deeply, deeply funny to me. But the good news is I do have a source book for playing VTM in the first century, so, you know, clearly we can have Duanesh turn up as a lovable goof. He's he's not a lovable goof. Like He can be a lovable he, goof. He, he's know. not. <laughs> a lovable goof with a magical pot going like, oh, whoops, I botched my role to send out dreams, and now people are killing again. <laughs> um, sorry, any other excellence of roleplay? Savage, okay. What are we going to do for next, uh, next campaign? Uh, sorry, just a second. Just calculating the XP. Oh, check on Cole's just proceeding to blow up and rage. It's a big finale, isn't it? It's a role play. It's like anywhere else. That's fair. Cool. So I think that'd be... 17 experience points for session number 39. That's two points of plot progression, breaking the curse, discovering a load of things about White Mountain, uh, and discovering a load of things about White Mountain. Um, three points of character development, that's Pope Jack being forced to learn a new magic and losing his rage, Sebastian finally giving in to his burning rage, and Reginald learning that acting with classiness is his to upkeep, implied bloodily. Two points, excellence of role play. the group conversing so freely with the ancient vampire. Chatterly, almost, essentially. <laughs> Especially with people in the background like trying to get you to stop repeatedly. <laughs> Why do you keep giving him all this information? <laughs> um, and Coral's rage finale explosion thing, plus 10 for finishing the campaign. How much was that toast again? 17. Uh, I'm going to jump off. Been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Do you have any highlights here, Nicholas? Uh, I just sent them to you real quick. Ah, uh, fair but fair. do them last because I don't want to take them off of other people if they've already. If yeah, they I'm going to have to go as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been a oh, yeah, sorry. I have let it run real late. And uh, uh, I'll talk to you guys next week. Fair. See you later. Bye, guys. Talk Bye. To you guys later. Cool. Bye. Which brings us speedily on to everyone's favorite part of the session then. It's the highlights. You're sad, everyone gone. Um, Ollie, do you have any highlights for that session? Um, casually talking to the vampire, like it wasn't going to kill us in the snap of the fingers. You know, basically casually chatting to an ancient demigod. <laughs> it, I, I, I don't know if I'm proud or surprised or both that you all, almost all, in fact, all of you essentially resisted the urge to go, like, yeah, we could become, like, new boy vampires and then 
ruled. <laughs> like, I was so, so deeply tempted, like, as everyone's leaving the room, to just roll back in and just, like, so, uh, I can get out of this wheelchair, can I? Absolutely. Oh dear. I mean, I I think it maybe would have been a bit harder, a bit harder. Yeah, a bit of a harder choice if any of you had been on the other side of the shroud and been able to do it. Um, but not having an easy way to do it, I think, helps. Uh, any other highlights, Holly? Um, <laughs> Reginald goes big, goes small game hunting. Big ghost, small game hunting. Yeah, why not? Don't quite get it, but okay. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just said small game hunting, because he goes hunting after the people who get away my promotion. That's what I meant. I didn't say big ghost, small hunting. Oh, sorry, you said Reginald goes small game hunting. Yeah. Oh, I got big oh, ghosts yeah, from. Brain. Uh, any of the highlights? Um, <clears throat> Paul's increasing planet, panic. <laughs> <laughs> it has been just like slowly ramping up to breaking point for three sessions at this point, at least. Thank you for noticing. I I loved watching you break in the background. <laughs> uh, any other uh, highlights, Ollie? Um, hope Jack becomes armless. I don't get that one. It's more to do with his rage, his impotency with his rage. And I was trying to make a joke about how his arm is the source of it. He lost it, so that really is armless. He really was armless. It's like a whole many layers of punnery there. I don't think it really works, I'm afraid, Ollie. You would say that. You don't like puns. I, I get what you mean. Even even as a pun, like I see what you mean, but it still doesn't really work. Um, yeah. Any other, any uh, other highlights? Uh, no, nothing no. else. Cool. Creed, do you have any highlights for that session? Oh, it was right early and not really related to anything. But pre-performance spicy chicken wings. Yeah, that was too great. You sound like Michael Gambon, Dumbledore. You genuinely did. Potter. Why did I write Potter? Like they were some spicy ass chicken wings. They're not usually that spicy. Like, but for the first half an hour, I was just chugging milk, trying to wash away the burn. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, any other highlights? Uh, just screaming. <laughs> After we enraged the vampire, they just casually trying to restart conversation. He would just scream back. Well, he's basically stuck for the rest of the scene after that. Rotshrek is a hell of a drug. Uh, any other highlights? Um, Paperjack gigabuffs the flaming torch. Slash burns away his rage. Fair, fair. Anything else? Uh, we got one already for Sebastian's Blaze of Glory explosion. Uh, no... We actually don't, technically. Well, you know, Sebastian goes down in a blaze of glory. As well as Sebastian foots the bill for our blunders. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> it's not even Sebastian. It's Sebastian's family. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's one of those things where I can't lie. I'm a little salty about that, but at the same time, it like in a good way because it ties in with the whole backstory I had for the character. So cool. you had me in the first half because the only reason I did it was because it ties in with the whole backstory <laughs> for the character. I was about to like give it to everyone equally, and then go, no, actually, the Thornbreeze would get to like. Yeah, like I say, I'm salty on their behalf, sort of thing, you know. Uh, fair, like, fair. Will we ever do an 80s game? We'll have your incredibly indebted janitor great grandson. Um, any other highlights, Chris? Uh, that was it for me. Fair, fair. Carl, do you have any highlights for that session? Um, so, uh, oh, I'll try and filter out the ones that we've already have. Uh, so, uh, this is a quote. Uh, a short amount of firm tugging. God damn it. <sighs> trying to think, uh, when did that get said? Did that definitely get said? Ah, I remember when that got said. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was pulling the stone out of the yeah. wall. Yeah. Any other highlights? 
uh, yeah, or also, uh, I say a quote, but like it's like both of these were descriptive sequences, uh, but uh, a series of wet thwacks. Damn it. And I love that in quotes they follow one after another. Uh, anything else? Uh, the Dream of Australia. I was so confused what Creed was talking about, and, and then he said it, and uh, flashes of a uh, fucking Australian accented character. Wasn't it? He wasn't even that he was from Chile, as I recall. He did an Australian ac- uh, accent, but the character was from Cyprus. I think, yeah. Yeah, there might have been an extra layer to it. I, can't, I, I, can't I don't remember what the fuck was happening, what the justification was there, if any. Uh, it might have just been one of those bits that you commit to because it makes me slightly irate and then keep doing it for eight plus months. Uh, any other highlights, Carl? Uh, the gang gets suspended. Mm-hmm. Fair time to think. Uh, anything else? Uh, everyone's story works out splendidly. And I don't necessarily mean it's all a happy ending so much as, like, uh, I say, with the characters and, like, their future selves and, like, everything's, like, the resolution and continuity. Oddly perfect in most instances. Anything else? Um, ah, oh, Ollie got, uh, Reginald's small game hunting, so that was covered. No, that was the last one. Thank you. Cool, let's have a look at young Nicholas's highlights. Uh, going out with a bang, we got that. Rage Flame, we got that. Gentleman's Agreement, what's he referring to there? Oh, when uh, they were talking with the vampire and uh, Benji was just like, don't make a deal with the devil. A Faustian bargain, that was it. And he's like, I'm not making a Faustian bargain, I'm making a Gentleman's Agreement. <laughs> <laughs> that's very fair but yeah just that whole sequence it's like you're giving away all the cards stop stop <laughs> clearly gonna have to do a follow up at some point with the now weakened dreams and the vampire still under there trying to get people to come down to him uh, I can have to do an expanded area map or something so, I mean, at least for the Roman stuff, he's got a point of reference because he's interacted with Romans. But, like, with the stuff we've told him, he's like, nah, this is bullshit. They're fucking with me. Like, yeah. what kind of stuff can he project, you know? What's he supposed to do as well? You've given him the King of England rules much of the world. Flying machines, lightning wire. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of fucked. Like, how do you even imagine that stuff? It's a good setup for a modern day campaign, though, right? It'll be pretty good. Uh, cool. I still feel like bullets and guns get a disservice. This is not a this is not a complaint about the campaigns. Just like like VTM in general, guns are pretty damaging. I don't, I, I don't. Is there a rationale ever given as to behind why? You know, say, for example, a high-powered, armor-penetrating slug doesn't absolutely fuck up anyone, even if they're still made of meat. I never quite understood that. Like, um, stamina and um, oh, fortitude. So the the two um, justifications... So the... What's it called? The what's only justification is that the things that guns are particularly good at destroying are not things that are particularly important to a vampire. They don't draw their strength from their musculature. They don't draw their strength from their bones. They don't use their organs for anything. The blood pounding through their veins doesn't actually pound. It just like dimly pulses and sluggishly pools in key points. Um, you do as much damage to the body generally outside of fourth duty bullshit but that body isn't actually important so the damage you're doing is irrelevant so something like a minigun which can literally shred a person or an ak-47 which can even shred a person Um, i mean i look at it like you would like a traditional zombie like unless you get that like key core headshot like it's all just like unless you of course like you remove an arm or something like that is actually how that works entirely. Zombies are really, traditional zombies are a really good way to think about it because headshots still do lethal damage to a vampire. 
um, and don't involve uh, uh, what's called so headshots from guns still do lethal damage to the vampire, um, and the chunky salsa rule is generally still in effect. So if you chunky would t- salsa rule, I've never heard it like referred like that. Yeah, the chunky it's, it's an old D and D term, I think. Um, so any any attack that would turn your character to the consistency of chunky uh, chunky salsa just by its mm. effect, whatever else you have in terms of damage mitigation outside of extremely powerful bullshit, you you just die anyway. So like a mini gun. Yes, technically you'd probably survive it, but in practice, if you look at it, you'd probably still die. Um, mm-hmm. Or like, I think vampires are surprisingly vulnerable to getting pushed out of planes as well, um, because the full damage is heavy enough in Wad that it will overwhelm even most forms of fortitude. Interesting. So, okay, cool. But the uh, Watsonian explanation is that vampires need to feel cool, and it's a very different aesthetic when you can kill vampires fairly easily with guns. That gives you more of like a blade yeah. situation, yeah. whereas the image of you get shot by a pistol but you keep going is both a terrifying yeah. opponent and quite fun as a power fantasy. Have you guys watched um, the Hawkeye series on... Not yet. I've heard Hawkeye. good things. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um... Yeah. And I think my highlight that has not been mentioned is I'm going to say we failed a campaign. We very rarely fail campaigns. So. It felt like if we had managed to return to Tutley Without Walt, or if we had decided as a campaign party rather to return to Tutley Without Walt, that we would have been able to avert the loose state there. But I suppose we just ended up going back to London. We're like, fuck it, we're here now. I think by the time you teleported out, you, you basically lost, right? Because you. You had successfully. Sorry. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You you had successfully like. You had successfully destroyed the magical cordon, isolating the place, which meant that people would start to flow in, and that would basically have incurred a government lockdown. So at that point, <gasps> did, lockdown. You did. God damn it! You didn't have any more freedom to operate. Um, or you would have had to really hot foot it. Okay, I see. Yeah, that, ma- that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I think like one of the core things for me that I was like, yeah, okay, fair enough, was uh, when you mentioned as like the debrief guy. It's like, well, you didn't actually bring anything back with you. I was yeah. like, yeah, fair enough. You technically saved a lot of lives, so I-, I would say the moral victory was probably more of a one. But that wasn't the objective uh, the Hat Wizards gave you. So and. Uh, Moreover, and probably more importantly as to why I didn't make a big deal about it, it wasn't really a thing any of you were concerned about um, at all. So, like, that was the victory that was claimed, I think, is you helped people, just not the order. But none of you were really concerned about helping people. Mm. If you may know, we even had quite a number of survivors. Basically, everyone who was left in the village, technically the pub landlord, you, like, stopped him from getting killed. Um, They're not Survivors in good shape, but you know, survivors they were. So that's Damn it, they did. Um, that's a good setup campaign for something else in future, if nothing else. So yeah, if we ever play a wraith game, I know what character I'm playing. I'm, I'm actually, I know we were talking all about the wraith thing, but I'm, I'm really kind of down for Orpheus. I think I'd really jive with. Uh, I might reread the rules this evening, even before I go to bed. Oh fucking bed. I love Orpheus. It's such a fun, dumb setting. Anywho, thank you all for a very entertaining session number 39. Does anyone have any final words for the recording? Rage!